we make technology beautiful. And by Michelin, the company that put America on radials. Hi everyone, I'm Roger Twabell and welcome to another week of college football here on ESPN. UCLA and Michigan, a couple of teams that could possibly meet in the Rose Bowl on New Year's Day. But two teams that have met before, and UCLA has never beaten the University of Michigan. The last time these two teams met, well, at the Astro Blue Bonnet Bowl down in Houston and Michigan with a very convincing victory over the Bruins of UCLA. Now, this will be the second week in a row that the Bruins venture into Big Ten country. Last week, they picked up a big win over the University of Wisconsin in Madison and uh, scoring over 50 points in that game, rolling up a tremendous amount of total yardage. Uh, last week for the University of Michigan, well, not a good week. They were in South Bend, Indiana, a night game at Notre Dame, and they lost to the Fighting Irish. So Michigan comes into this game with a 1-1 record. UCLA off to a great start. They are 2-0. Jim Thacker, Paul McGuire will be handling the play-by-play -play in Keller. And let's hear from them. Michigan returns home to Ann Arbor after that sound thrashing at South Bend, Paul, and they're running into one of the surprise teams of this year. Well, the one thing about UCLA, Jimmy, that we got to take a look at is Michigan will not throw the ball against them. I don't think so. Not with the defensive secondary that UCLA has. That is by far their strong point. On the other hand, Michigan does love to control the football, and I think Bo Schembechler is going to do that. He's going to start the game with a young man by the name of Rice, who is a freshman who has never started a game before. Well, he's shaking things up after what happened at South Bend, no question about that. And Paul, there's no question what uh, UCLA is going to come in here and do. That's put the ball in the air. Well, Ramsey, the quarterback, is just an excellent football player. I guess the best way to describe him, he's, he's a great athlete. He's a great runner, and there is no design plays for Ramsey to run the football. What he does is scramble very well, but he throws the ball very, very well on sprint outs, rollout type passes. On the other hand, Michigan's great All-American wide receiver is questionable today. Anthony Carter had a groin pull at Notre Dame. I think that man could make the difference in the football game. If there's one man that Michigan has, and that's Anthony Carter, he was working out before the game. He looked good. The question is, how is he 100% or not? I don't think he is. All right. UCLA has never beaten Michigan. If they do it here today, it'll be dismay to a great crowd over 100,000 for the 43rd straight time. Well, it will be a big crowd over 100,000, as Jim mentioned. UCLA, their head coach, Terry Donahue, in his seventh year, one time one of the youngest head coaches in the country. But, uh, hey, being a head coach in a major university will age you quickly. But Donahue with a good record, 47-21-3 over the years. And as we mentioned, a big win last week over Wisconsin. And uh, Terry Donahue and some of his players talked about the victory and talked about meeting Michigan. Uh, we were defeated extremely uh, soundly by Michigan in the Blue Bonnet Bowl. Uh, we were really dominated in that football game. Uh, I'm sure that uh, I, I think we'll play better this, this time around. Uh, I think our players will be better prepared, and I hope that I'll do a better job as a head coach to prepare the team. Uh, when you go down there to play Michigan, you better make sure your chin strap is buckled real tight and that uh, you're prepared to hit because... Uh, They'll come after us, and it's a hard place to play, and uh, I'm sure that they'll be very excited for the game. I think our players will be excited for the game. It'll be a good contest, and I just hope that we'll play better this time than the last time we played. Michigan's a game. You know, what, whatever you did last week doesn't really matter. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a whole new thing, and uh, I, I would be lying if I said I wasn't pleased that we did so well against Wisconsin, considering how they played Michigan last year or uh, in the last game. But uh, it's going to be a hell of a game, I tell you that. It's going to be a whole new ball game. So we're just looking for a tough one. Well, there is some concern in Michigan. We'll hear from Coach Bo Schembechler right after this. The University of Michigan comes into today's game with a 1-1 one -one record, and head coach Bo Schembechler would like to get them back on the winning track after losing to Notre Dame and South Bend, Indiana. But UCLA will be a tough team to beat. Jim Beckler has been a college head coach for 20 years, first at Miami of Ohio, then the University of Michigan, of course, where he's been for a long stint. His career record, 164 wins, just 42 losses, and six ties, one of the most successful college coaches ever. Uh, one of the keys for the University of Michigan today, as you heard uh, Jim Thacker and Paul McGuire mention, Anthony Carter. Carter, a very, very important man to them on offense, and against Notre Dame last week, watch this punt return. He breaks a number of tackles, shows his outstanding speed. He goes 72 yards on the punt return for the touchdown in last week's game against Notre Dame. Wolverine head coach Bo Schembechler talked about his Michigan squad and what they have to do to beat UCLA. 
two things concern me. One, uh, and most particularly, the offensive line. Um, I think we've got to um, uh, we've got to do something with our attack that we we cut out our mistakes. I mean, we're just an absolute mistake ball club. Maybe we can't handle what we're doing. I don't know. But uh, we've got to do something in that regard. Defensively, we're not controlling the line of scrimmage up front, and uh, we're not making enough plays in their backfield. We're not pressuring their passer. So I think up front is where we have the most work to do, but we've got to do some things offensively to, to uh, eliminate our mistakes. They've got a tremendous quarterback, explosive receivers, and a good defense. Uh, a very uh, well-endowed team and uh, a national power. They should be in the top 10 by the time we play them. Uh, they have a great secondary and, and some great down people, great middle guard, and Eatman's probably as good a defensive tackle as there is in the country. So um, they're at least as good as Notre Dame and uh, perhaps a little bit better. Head coach Bo Schembechler of Michigan talking about his opponent today, the Bruins of UCLA. We'll be back with more on college football ESPN right after this. UCLA will be looking for their first victory ever against the University of Michigan. They're going to try to do it in Ann Arbor. Over 100,000 University of Michigan fans on hand. It'll be a tough chore, but Terry Donahue and the UCLA Bruins off to a great start in 82 with a 2-0 record. Meanwhile, Michigan is 1-1. Jim Thacker, Paul McGuire with the play-by-play -play in color. Let's go to them now in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Weather is not good today in Ann Arbor, but it probably is not going to be a big factor either. It's been sort of a foggy, misty, drizzly morning in Ann Arbor. The rain has stopped now, and Homer Smith, the offensive coordinator of UCLA, said, Paul, he did not think it would affect the passing game of the Bruins. I don't think anything's going to affect the passing game of the Bruins. That is their game, and they're going to stay with it. Ramsey, the quarterback, is just a, an excellent tour. Besides that, as we said in the opening, Jimmy, he's... A, He's a great runner, so it's, it's not going to affect UCLA at all. Defensively, uh, if, if it's going to if it's going to happen, you may see defensive backs from Michigan falling down or slipping, and it's going to be to the advantage of the offensive wide receivers. There's part of the throng here, over 100,000. The 9,000 requests were turned away after this game was sold out. Here comes UCLA, clad in its white jerseys, gold uh, headgear. And Michigan wearing its home uh, blue jerseys in the maize pants. The toss of the coin will be in just a moment. The tri captains are out. Jim, I'd like to. We'd like to give the people the offensive starting lineup for Michigan, <laughs> except Bo Schembechler won't give it to anybody. He wouldn't even give it to his SID. He said it's a football game. It's nobody's business but mine. We do know one thing, though, that they're going to start at, at fullback. That's what we got earlier. A freshman who has never started a game before for Michigan, number 36, Rice. And that we are sure. Well, I think Maybe. UCLA has won the toss. And I believe the Bruins will take the football. That's going to be the signal. R referee Jerry Hendrickson is down with the tri-captains of UCLA. And so Michigan will kick off here to start the football game. And we will have UCLA going to the fireworks immediately. Bill Tom Ramsey, their outstanding quarterback, and a great core of receivers. And Cormac Carney, JoJo Townsell, and Paul Bergman with Doki Williams coming off the bench. So they have a great cast here to throw against Michigan. The Wolverines last week were pushed all over the field pretty much by Notre Dame. And their pride is a little bit damaged over that one, Paul. And there are the weather conditions. Temperature 60 degrees. No wind, but it is very foggy and drizzly here in Ann Arbor. Well, I talked to Reggie McKenzie, who plays with the Buffalo Bills this last week, went to Michigan, and he said the one thing about Michigan, after a loss, you don't want to play them. And, it, you know, they come out. Uh, I guess it's been tough because Bo won't even tell anybody who's starting, so it's going to be scary. We mentioned UCLA trying to win its first game ever over a Michigan team. They're also flying in the face of tradition otherwise, too, because Bo Schembechler's never lost a regular season game to a Pac-10. That official is headed by Jerry Hendrickson, the referee. The umpires, Tom Manning, headlinesman Ed Marisic, line judge is George Solomon, Jim Kemmerling, the field judge, and Jim Sherlock, the back judge. Here come the Wolverines of the University of Michigan. Picked in preseason to win another Big Ten title, which would tie Bo Schembechler with his 10th with the great fielding hills. Michigan uh, has won all five games. The 1961 game, I guess, was a tremendous upset over UCLA. And last year, they wound up the season. These two teams did playing in Houston's Astrodome and the Blue Bonnet Bowl. And uh, 
UCLA was stunned in that one as Michigan ran rough shot in what was supposed to be a very close game, 33 to 14. As a matter of fact, Michigan allowed UCLA something like 33 yards rushing for the whole game. And if you look at that record, Jim, the five games, none of them were close. I mean, Michigan just dominated all five games, and that's the scary part. I think that UCLA may turn the tide today. I'm, I like UCLA in this football game. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, Michigan coach uh, Bo Schembechler likes to play a, a football game where he can control the line of scrimmage. That he could not, not do last the year, or last week. Terry Donahue, on the other hand, goes more for great finesse and passing, more wide open attack. So we do have two different styles of uh, coaching philosophy here today. Yeah, Terry Donahue is, is the kind of guy that you know, he gets a little excited, but not near as much as Bo Schembechler. I, you know, when I watch this man, and you see coach many teams, when you watch him, when, when somebody makes a mistake, I wouldn't go near him. I, I'd kind of sneak off down around the 10-yard line, then come up to the bench from behind. I'm sure you got a glance there of uh, Anthony Carter, the All-American wide receiver for Michigan, who received a groin full muscle at Notre Dame, and he's questionable here today. I think we'll see him play just how much. That's the thing. There's Carter, who set all the records here at Michigan, or what he hasn't said he's going to. He's been uh, among the leaders in balloting for the Heisman Trophy for the last two years, and he's a candidate, of course, again this year. Michigan's out on the field. Kicking off of them will be Ali Hajashik, who came here on his own, walking on from his home in Arlington, Texas, was brought here by his father, who once taught at Michigan, and he's been their kicker ever since. Back deep, Doki Williams and Jojo Tanzel, two outstanding receivers, both very fast for UCLA. And here's Hajashik, soccer-style kicker, very strong leg and will be underway momentarily. Michigan versus UCLA has to be one of the football headliners for this third weekend of 1982. Hey, Jim, UCLA has surprised a lot of people because they weren't picked to be very high this year. That's ex absolutely right. And right now, you got to consider them a strong contender in the Pac-10. Hajishik kick headed for the end zone. Back is Doki Williams about five yards deep, and he'll have no second thoughts here, touching it right down in the end zone. UCLA will start from its own 20, first and 10. So we'll see the Bruins come on the field with Tom Ramsey, that quarterback who's had a great start, six touchdown passes in two games, has completed 35 out of 55. Ramsey will have a fine set of receivers, Townsell and Carney, two great ones on the wide slots, and Nelson, the tailback, here's the offensive line, and nobody in that line weighs under 250 pounds. Kevin Nelson will be uh, the tailback, and the fullback is going to be Frank Bruno, so he did start. They'll use the tight end in motion. Pitch out wide to Nelson. Gets a good block, and he cracks it over the 25-yard line. Picks up about six yards on the play before John Light tucks him over the sidelines with Paul Giergash, the great linebacker of Michigan. Oh, he got a super block from the tight end, Howell. He just came out and kicked the corner back out, and the hole was there. There's the defensive line, anchored by Sinchitz inside. Al Sinchitz, a great uh, nose guard. Fine linebackers in Giergash and Bourne, and Bostic at strong safety may be one of the best that's ever worn the maze in blue at Michigan. Second down, about four for UCLA. They give it to Frank Bruno, the fullback, and he is stacked up at the line. Nothing going there. The thick Michigan line by, read by Winfred Carraway was there to greet Frank Bruno. Bruno hobbled a little bit by a slightly injured ankle that he received in the Wisconsin game. Is getting the start nevertheless. So here's our first third down attempt coming up for the game. Terry Donahue has great confidence in uh, Tom Ramsey's ability to run the attack from the field. He's quite a field general. Third, about a little over two yards to go from about the 28 for UCLA. Carney in motion. Ramsey for his first to pass, 10 of the day, may run it. Being chased by Thompson, going for the marker, don't think he made it. Robert Thompson played that play perfectly with Giergash, and Ramsey could not get outside, thanks to Thompson's great pursuit, and UCLA will have to punt. Well, he had both backs out there trying to block Thompson, and either guy could put him down, and Ramsey elected to run the football. If he would have cut it up earlier, he might have been able to pick up the first down, but Thompson did his job strung it out, and they made the tackle. Kevin Bunafe averaging over 41 yards a punt, a left-footed kicker's back. Evan Cooper's waiting for Michigan. Michigan had 10 men on the line. Now they drop some off to set up the return. Bunafe's kick. Cooper backpedaling at the 30. 35-40. Gets a block. 
Comes near midfield, taken down the 29 in great field position for Michigan. So the Wolverines get the ball for the first time in the game, and it's at their own 48-yard line, and that's tremendous field position. Steve Smith and Anthony Carter both in the game. There's Smith, a quarterback who's developed a solid player. Of course, Carter, the great receiver. Here's the line. They had to rebuild after that wholesale loss of three All-Americans from last year's fine team. Smith, the tailback, is Larry Ricks. Give it to Ricks. Over the 50 to the UCLA 46. And Michigan firing off the line with... Uh, a little more authority that time. Lee Knowles, an inside linebacker, made the stop for UCLA. Ricks, who played in the shadow of the great uh, Wolford a year ago, is getting his chance. Here's the defensive line for UCLA. Eatman, an All-American candidate, so is Carl Morgan. That's the heart of the defense. But maybe the strength is this secondary. Sullivan, Sanchez, outstanding past the defenders. Second, about four for Michigan. Cannis in motion. Another give to Ricks. And Ricks uh, gets away from one tackler and gets it inside the 45. Mike Barbie and Ron Butler team to make the stop. Lee Knowles was also in there, number 85. Ricks has carried the first two times for Michigan. And he's put together runs for a total of nine. It'll be 31. All right, now take a look at Knowles, number 85. He's the man that has Ricks in the backfield. Right here, he plays it fine from the inside outside, but doesn't make the tackle, and Ricks gets close to the first down. Third, about a yard and a half now for Michigan. UCLA could not pick up a first down the first time. Vince Bean is split out. That goes Callis in motion. They give it again to Ricks, and he will not get there. Outstanding defensive play for UCLA. Knowles is made by Knowles and by Butler. I think Butler's the guy that really got him on the shoestrings. It'll be fourth down for Michigan. I don't think Bo Schimbeckler will go for it here. No, no, no way. You're right, Butler, number 86, is the man that was in there. You know, the linebackers are just outside. The two inside linebackers, Knowles and Butler, are doing a great job. They're letting the defensive line take all, all the punishment up front, and they're just warding off the blocks and getting to the backfield. But Don Brackett, he's had a great two years in Michigan. He's a little under his previous average the last two years, less than 40 yards a kick, waiting as Tom Sullivan, a strong safety of UCLA. Beautiful high hang time punt. Sullivan's going to let it go, and it'll be Michigan to down it. Nope, it's in the end zone. That was a tough break for Michigan. They could have put UCLA inside the five-yard line. And so each team has had a shot at it. Thus far, the defenses have held up. And in Ann Arbor, early in the first quarter, no score between the Wolverines and the Bruins. Michelob brings you the seven-day weekend on top of the world style. Whether you're a hundred stories above the city or a mile up in the mountains, the smooth and mellow taste of Michelob all across the country. It's the best beer in the house. Put a little weekend in your weekend. Yeah. UCLA again for its own 20. Bruno and Nelson behind Ramsey on the straight drop back. Ramsey great for Texas. He's going deep for Carney. Intercepted by Michigan at the 40. Michigan gets it right back. Pulled off by the Wolverines. And that was Cooper, Evan Cooper. The free safety went right back to Carney. And Michigan gets the first turnover of the game. Well, I'll tell you, Cooper just played the free safety. And that's what it's called. He was sitting back. He had no coverage at all. He saw Carney coming down the field. And he just played center field on him. Now, Rams is going to get a little bit of heat. But he steps up into the pocket. He sees Carney going down. Does not read the free safety. Now, take a look at Cooper, 21. Gets in front of the ball. Makes sure of the interception. Carney reverses the defense and makes the tackle. Now, Michigan back to the attack. Again, good field position. This time for his own 40-yard line. Steve Smith with Ricks. And the tailback behind on the option. There's the footing that Paul McGuire mentioned earlier. The field is a little bit wet, and you saw Smith try to keep and cut, and his feet went right out of beneath him, and there was Lee Knowles to take him down for UCLA. Yeah, Smith has got to have a good game in order for Michigan to win this football game. Last week, he had a terrible game against Notre Dame, and that's the one thing that, that Bo was a little bit concerned about. But he is their quarterback and will be their quarterback, and again, he's got to have a good game for Michigan to stay in this game. 
He has Carter in there at the top of your screen. Number one, Ben Speen is flanked wide left in the eye with Ricks deep. And here's Smith going to work now. It'll be second and ten. Gives on the deep handoff to Ricks, and Ricks has met hard at the line of scrimmage again. And UCLA's defense now buckling up here after giving up the turnover, and they've shut Michigan down for two straight plays. It'll be third down and ten. Oh, watch Barbie, the, the, the defensive right tackle, Mike Barbie, number 89. These guys are all in there, and it's, it's just no place for Ricks to go. There's the big guy on top. And when you have no running room, West is the other guy, number 41, that made the tackle. When you have no running room, you better throw the ball against him. And I don't know if that's smart either. Ricks has been the workhorse with only eight yards and four carries. UCLA is showing blitz, but they drop down. Here's Smith now with some running room. Smith the 45, has the first down. Over the 50 to the UCLA, 48-yard line. Go Steve Smith before Don Rogers, the free safety, could catch him. And there's the ability of Smith to adjust. He really came into his own a year ago, Paul, and that's the big play. All right, when you take a look at what Smith does now, he's looking for Carter right now. Carter's covered by Sanchez on the outside, but he sees that opening. The linebackers dropped off, and Smith does the one smart thing, runs the football and picks up the first down. Good heads-up play. Second time today that Michigan has been in UCLA territory. First down from the 48-yard line. Ricks with a deep handoff, trying the left side as Michigan continues, as usual, to establish a red ground game. Carl Morgan, the nose guard, and Ron Butler team up to stop Ricks, which is going to be a pickup of about four or five yards. You know, when you can hear those pads popping up where we are, you know that they're making an awful contact in that defensive and offensive line. And I guess everybody has said it, but that's where the game is really played. I asked uh, one of the UCLA coaches if he considered his team physical or finesse, and he said, we think we're physical. Now Smith looking. Fires the side to Canis. Tight end takes it for first down inside the 35. Ron Butler, a linebacker on the stop for the Bruins, but Michigan's on a roll right now. Two first downs in a row as Smith connects on his first pass, and it's to be marked at the 31 first and 10. All right, Smith throws to the tight end, Caddis. Now, if you're going to attack a strong defensive secondary, the guy that you want to throw to would be the tight end because he does have one-on-one -on -one coverage. Butler is a linebacker. He's going to get some help from the safety, but a linebacker, it's, it's very difficult to stay with a tight end. Michigan getting deep now. There's the deep handoff to Ricks again. Lawrence Ricks stops the 30, and UCLA looks like it's really king here on Lawrence Ricks, the tailback who stepped in replacing Wolford, Doug West, down Rodgers on the stop, so they came in quickly from the secondary. Well, you Wolfolk, see of course, had, excuse me, Paul, had a great career here, and Rick's kind of had to play in Butch's shadow, but now he's getting his chance. Well, the thing about UCLA is that they attack so strongly, and, and they, they play an aggressive defense. That delay to the halfback or fullback will not work against this team because it takes too long. Second and nine, play action fake. Smith down the middle, there's Carter, and it's taken instead by Ben Speed. Bean and Carter in the same zone, and two for two this time to the UCLA 11, first and 10. Well, Bo, is, Bo has a strong belief to, to attack a strength of a team. Now, the strength of UCLA is their defensive secondary. But look at Bean, he's wide open, one-on-one -on, -one on Sanchez. And Rogers is the guy that makes a tackle, but Sanchez had Bean one-on-one -on -one and couldn't stay with him. They're matched up again, and now you got Carter out here on the left-hand side. Now Michigan threatens to open the scoring. Smith two for two now for 31 yards, and he has taken Michigan to the UCLA 11-yard line. Here's a handoff to Ricks coming to the left in a little misdirection. He's just inside the 10 where Don Rogers wraps him up on the nine. Pick up of a couple. It'll be second and eight. Nine yards to get to the end zone. Carl Morgan also down at the bottom, number 40. What a player he's been for UCLA. Defensive player of the year in 1981. All right, Ricks is trying to get to the outside again, and there's just no place to go. They force very well the defensive secondary and the defensive linemen, linebackers. Both wide receivers are set to the right side with Carter really flanked out. Second down play. Here comes the option by Smith. Now he's going to pitch it back to Ricks. He'll score. Larry Ricks on a perfect pitch from Smith, and the Wolverines have broken over the scoring. They took the interception and went right downfield, marching over 50 yards on the drive, and it's Michigan 6, UCLA nothing. All right, you know, when Smith goes down the line, he makes his play work. Watch how long he holds on to the ball, Jim. 
right here. He's waiting, he's waiting, he's waiting. And then Rogers falls down, along with West. West takes Rogers out of the play, and there's nobody to take Ricks. He walks into the end zone. Good play. Ali Hodges, he can to kick the point after try. 6 nothing Michigan. Michigan about a two or three point underdog in this game. Hodgesheek has it perfect. That's 39 in a row for Ali Hodgesheek. And Michigan has the first seven points of the ball game, led by the running of Larry Ricks and the passing of Steve Smith. The Wolverines crack through to break the ice with seven minutes and 31 seconds to go in the first period. It's Michigan now seven and UCLA nothing. So the first big turnover of the game turns into a scoring drive for Michigan. Wolverine 7, Bruins nothing. We'll be right back. Top ranked boxing back Thursday, September 30th on ESPN. Sam Rosen and Randy Gordon will be on hand for the live action from Charleston, South Carolina. The main event featuring junior welterweight Robin Blake from Lubbock, Texas against Carlos Santana of Camden, South Carolina. Be a home time fight for him. So join us here on ESPN for that Thursday, September 30th, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time Live. That's where I went to school. The Citadel, the Charleston, Citadel. South Carolina. What a great town. A great golf course down there in Wild Dunes. Here's the scoring drive. 59 yards and 10 plays only. And it was the passing of Steve Smith that really highlighted the drive. Mixed in with some running by Ricks who scored the touchdown. And Michigan is broken on top. Now we can look for UCLA maybe to get a little bit more serious about their passing, Paul. Yeah, and I think short passes. Here's the kick downfield. Doki Williams is back waiting, and it'll go over his head in the end zone, and it'll be down right at the end line by JoJo Townsell. And for the third time, UCLA will start its series from the 20-yard line. The Bruins have yet to gain a first down. Michigan leads 7-0, and UCLA comes back on the field. They really haven't been tested by Long Beach State nor Wisconsin, where Michigan, after an opening victory by Wisconsin, not nearly as impressive as the one UCLA scored, then was treated rather rudely last week by Notre Dame. So here's UCLA's Ramsey trying to get some fire into his team. Has Nelson at tailback and Brian Wiley. Nope, Bruno's back in there. Bruno at fullback despite the injury. Give it to Bruno. Fullback, right off right guard. A little bit of a crossbuck play. Picks up a couple of three. Keith Bostick, you'll hear his name called a lot in the team. Outstanding strong safety. And Robert Thompson, one of the captains for Michigan. When I see Bostic up in the line of scrimmage that close, and a strong safety, remember, is usually covering the tight end. A little play action pass, get that tight end free right behind the linebacker. Be trouble for Michigan. Toa Sapali is coming out at fullback, replacing Bruno. There goes Nelson in motion. Ramsey looking. Ramsey off of the side to Nelson, the speedster. Tries to put a little juke on the guy, Bostic, but he'll have none of that. And he's taken out of bounds just across the 25. A gain on the play, as you see Thompson watching things from a sitting position. A gain on the play, but not enough for a first down. It'll be third down upcoming for UCLA. All right, yeah, you see Ramsey. He's going to roll just about four steps to his left, and this is a tough pass to throw from running to your left as a right-handed quarterback. And you see Nelson on Bostic. Bostic got great position, kept him forced to the sidelines, and let him pick up about six or seven yards. We had a flag on the play. And a penalty against Michigan. This will give UCLA its first first down. Personal foul against the Wolverines. He might have been hit out of bounds. In any event, it's a break for UCLA, giving them new life. That's the first first down of the Bruins, and it's at the UCLA 41, their very best field position as, uh, as yet. Townsell is to the right side. Here comes... Uh, Tight in motion. They give it a tail back and nothing doing. Paul Giergash was right there to stack up the play and at most he got about a yard out of it as Frank Cephas hit on the play by Carraway and down. Cephas is a junior from Newark, Delaware, has now replaced Kevin Nelson at tailback. Toa Sapali has come in at fullback. He's the last remaining Samoan at UCLA, for the moment at least. And now Nelson comes back in. So Nelson will team here with Bruno. At fullback with Bruno, who's returned. <laughs> Trying so to keep up with this. Donnie, who is really shifting his backfield. Ramsey, plenty of time, drills it complete. It is caught by JoJo Townsell inside Michigan territory for the first time today for UCLA. John Lott on the stop. 
but number 26, Townsell, who has already caught 66 passes for UCLA, grabs another one. I will tell you one thing about, about Ramsey that I don't like, and watch how quick his feet is. He's thinking run when these guys aren't open right away. He's got all day. You see that quick move, and then he sees Townsell open, and he can fire the football. That he can do. But that fact that he goes back there in a thinking run when he's got that great offensive line because there was nobody from Michigan near him. That's the first penetration in the Michigan territory for UCLA. First down at the 49-yard line. Bruno the fullback still and Nelson the tailback. Give us to Nelson. Up the middle. Trying to cut back and he stops with a great play by Mike Boren. Number 40, Boren, who teams in that uh, position with Paul Geargash on the other side. And what a pair of linebackers they are for Bo Schimbleckrud at Michigan. The inside linebacker, Boren, I'm going to tell you something. If he doesn't make this tackle right here, Nelson is running because there was nobody there. The pursuit was going to their right, to Michigan's right, and Nelson was cutting back to Michigan's left. And if Boren isn't there, he's gone. It'll be second and nine for UCLA, now around the Michigan 47. Ramsey looking. Ramsey tracks. Taken down by Robert Thompson. Number 99, Thompson, gets to Ramsey. Winfred Carraway was also putting on pressure, but it was Thompson, the big uh, captain from Blue Island, Illinois. And he was in to sink Ramsey for a loss at the 47 of UCLA. You know, as good as Thompson is, I don't understand why no one blocked him. I mean, he wasn't even touched on the outside. Now, whether Byrne, number 71, the left tackle was supposed to block him or not, I don't know. But nobody touched Thompson. He did his job. They got an extra wide receiver in. Doki Williams replaces the tight end, Paul Bergman. So Williams, Townsell, and Carney all are in for UCLA. Third and long yardage. Play action by Ramsey. Sidelines, he goes to Carney over his head. Arnie had no chance for that one. Incomplete pass. And so UCLA is unable to sustain anything against the Michigan defense, being hailed here by 100,000 plus as they stop the Bruins again. Punting situation now for UCLA as Kevin Bonafé comes in the lineup. Sophomore from Tulare, California. In Spanish, his name means good faith. And there he is, left-footed kicker. Back deep for Michigan is Evan Cooper. Standing inside the 15. Weather suddenly brightened up here. Nice kick away. Cooper backs up to the eight. Cooper and he eluded one tackler. And if he had better balance, might have gotten another five yards. He stopped right on the 20. There, Michigan will go first and 10 with a 7 0 lead and about four minutes to go in the first quarter from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Number 50 for Michigan, of course, is their great linebacker, Geargash. All right, let's just take a look. Here's what you're talking about. If he has good footing, not only is he going to run further, he might have broken it all away. Now, Michigan will start from the 20. Their scoring drive was uh, ignited by an interception, and they went 59 yards to score, and now they start back at the 21st and 10. Smith still the quarterback with Ricks behind him. There's the give again to Ricks. To the right side, gets a hole and drives it close to the 25. Carl Morgan pounds Ricks back from middle guard, but the gain's going to be close to five yards. Boy, the tailbacks really get a workout for Bo Schimbeckler, do they not? <laughs> they do, but I'll tell you, I think Bo got his point across after the Notre Dame game. <laughs> All right, you see Ricks now. Watch the guard pulling. It's just an off tackle play, and the hole is there. Just good acceleration. Dunaway, number 88, the tight end, gets an excellent block. Anytime he can drive the linebacker back five yards, you've got a good block. Four yard on the play, second down and six. Play action fake, sidelines, it goes to Bean. Threw it behind him. Pretty good pressure that time from UCLA. Don Rogers had covered Bean, but Smith got no good throw on the ball at all. Went behind him incomplete. So Smith was trying to catch UCLA looking for the run, a little play action fake inside to keep the linebackers at home, but it didn't work. I don't know if he checked this off at the line of scrimmage, but they had a double up on the outside. They had Sanchez, number 21, just bumping the wide receiver, Bean coming off, and then the free safety, Rogers, number seven, is supposed to pick him up. Rogers never got there. If the ball was on target, it would have been a first down. They're doubling up down Anthony Carter, and Sanchez is on Carter. That's going to be quite a pairing. Here is Smith looking for Carter. Goes to Carter up the middle, and he's caught beautifully at the 40. Oh, what a play by Anthony Carter. 
Carter. Jim, this ball could not have been thrown any better because he had Lang, number two, coming in to nail Carter. If Lang goes for the ball, he might have been able to at least knock it down. But take a look at this pass. It is perfect, a little wobbly, but Carter's right there. He's got great hands. I don't know why they're waving no, no reception because that ball was right in his hand. Saul Smith now is two out of four, three out of four for 50 yards. His passing for the difference. Right back again, looking for Carter. Fires a short one for Hicks. He cannot hold it. Larry Ricks off the left side. Could not hold it. Donnie Houston, don't panic. We're early in the game. It's only 7 nothing. You know, Turner did something. Jimmy Turner, number 35, the right cornerback for UCLA, did one thing on Carter. That pass was supposed to be a short slant to him. And what he did is after about three yards, he knocked him off his pattern. Smith didn't have him to throw to, so he had to dump it to the back coming out of the backfield. And Irv Eatman, the All-American tackle, was putting pressure that time on Smith to might have hurried him a little bit. Carter's up the top of your screen to the right. There's the stats on Smith. His passing definitely has been the difference so far as Michigan leads 7-0. Big draw. Smith being chased back here by linebacker. Smith, Smith uh, fires on the run incomplete. Wanted to go down the sidelines to either Caddis or Carter. They both were there. And good coverage by Leone. Delacono was also back there from the linebacking post. Delacono was the, was the linebacker that was chasing Smith. Watch what he does, Jim. He quits. He could have had him. Now, all right, he doesn't have him here, but watch what happened. He quits. He stops, slows down a second, but he could have gotten up to Smith and made the tackle. You can't quit on these guys. Michigan's uh, coming after you. You certainly cannot, Paul. It's 7 0 Michigan leads. Two minutes, 38 seconds to go in the first period. Michigan has definitely been the dominant team so far in the first period. Now Carter's to the left. Again, he has Sanchez on him. Sanchez with three interceptions. Here's Smith looking for Carter. Up the middle, Carter. Great catch again near the 50. Taken down short of the first down. But Smith, or Carter, has caught everything within reach. Walter Lang made the stop, but he had beaten Sanchez again on the, looked like a little, uh, almost not a post pattern, but just a angle across. Well, see, the thing about it is that you want to, Carter had to get beyond the 10-yard marker. They, they didn't give him that. They're, they're bumping him at the line of scrimmage, throwing him off his pattern. Now he's got to run a shorter pattern to get in the timing play, and it was only an 8-yard pattern. Bracken is in the punt. And back deep for UCLA is Tom Sullivan. Goodbye. Oh, great kick. Headed for the end zone. Sullivan's going to field it inside the five. Did not let it go, and UCLA will be put in the hole. Well, he's tried to let it go at the 10, and this time he took it inside the five. It looked like it was headed for the end zone, and it might have been a costly decision. Should have never done it. Well, that he should not. So UCLA be in the hole. We come back with Michigan leading 7 zip. Once again, ESPN will present complete live coverage of the Davis Cup competition that will be coming to you from Australia with Jim Simpson, Clef Drysdale. The singles on Friday, October 1st, they'll be at 5 a.m. Eastern Time. That'll be 5 in the morning, 2 o'clock out on the Pacific Coast live. The doubles match Saturday, October 2nd, will be at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. That's a little better hour and 11 o'clock out west. And then the singles on Sunday, October 3rd at 5.30 a.m. again at 2.30 on the Pacific Coast. All coming to you from Perth, Australia, as John Macaron and company try to get the Davis Cup in their battle with Australia. So that's been a familiar struggle down through the years of Davis Cup tennis. UCLA now is trapped deep in a hole of its own eight, first and ten. There's the first down situation in Michigan. Probably dominated the game a little more than that. UCLA had one little surge, and then it was stopped near midfield. Now Ramsey's backed up. Gives it to his fullback, Bruno. About a yard, nothing more. Mike Boren, number 40, and number 63, Winfred Carraway. In there for Michigan, so was Giergash, number 50. No one can decide whether it's Giergash or Gergash. And they asked the player, and he said, well, it's always been Gergash, but everybody calls me Giergash. I'm going to go with that. What do you want to call him? Two names. Here in Let's call him Paul. That's a good name. <laughs> Second and nine for UCLA. Let's see if Ramsey tries to take a gamble here and throw it to get out of trouble. 
Yep, play action. Here comes Ramsey. May run for it. Now he's got a man down here. Tight end uh, Bergman, and they're going to say no interference. Oh, oh, stop. A little collision there, but no interference. Bergai was covering, and Deergash was putting on pressure. Sinchitz also fired through on uh, Ramsey. He was doing a little rollout instead of a drop back, which is pretty wise down there. All right, take a look at it now. Bergman, he's the tight end that's in motion. You tell me this isn't pass interference. You can't interfere with the guy going for the ball if you're going for the football. This is definitely pass interference. When you bump the receiver, and that's exactly what he did. Well, I think you're right. Bergai was playing the receiver, not the ball, Paul. Exactly. But uh, no flag, so it is third down. Up the middle comes the ball back. Bruno stopped around the 10. UCLA will have to punt from its own end zone. Here, Gash again, in sparking to play with Mike Bourne, number 40. And is he fired up? Michigan looks like a different team here in the first half than it did a week ago against Notre Dame. And the punt out end zone is Kevin Bunafe. You think Michigan might try to block this one, Paul? No, because they're going to get excellent field position. You go for a return here and not have somebody run in there and hit the kicker. Evan Cooper's waiting. There's the kick away. Cooper at the zone 48. Back in the UCLA territory. Boy, he could have broken that tackle and been off the races, but he's taken down around the 42. And Michigan has, as Paul McGuire said, excellent field position here as they start again on the drive with 16 seconds to go in the first quarter. Jimmy, you don't want to play conservative football against Michigan. Now, UCLA's got an open passing attack, and they should use it. You can't play that kind of straight-ahead football and go man-on-man -man with Michigan. They're fired up. They're at home, and they're a tough team inside. That was another 41-yard punt by Bunafe. Now, uh, Michigan, they've been uh, had success both running and passing. Here's the option. Uh, Smith on the keep. Spins inside, and he pays for it as Don Rogers, number seven, really smacked him hard after a lineman had gotten him in close, looked like Doug West, the linebacker, had him first. Then Rogers, after he was set up, really chilled him. So that's the end of the first period from Ann Arbor, Michigan, over 102,000. It is Michigan 7, UCLA nothing. ESPN Saturday night of the fights continues with what should be a knockout of a battle on Saturday, October 2nd from Harris, Atlantic City. Eddie Mustafa Muhammad will take on Badi Mwale from Zambia, Africa. That'll be October 2nd at 8 p.m. Eastern time. I hope that's his name. I don't want to face him <laughs> if it's wrong. Boy, am I glad you're doing those promos. Woo. Terry Donahue, a little serious here. Michigan has uh, held the advantage, 56 yards to 44 for passing, but Michigan leads the big one. Play action by Smith. Down the middle to Carter. Has it for 15. Taken down hard by Walter Lang, but another catch by Anthony Carter. That's his third of the day. He has already set the Big Ten record now for pass receptions and has taken over number one at Michigan. Well, I'll tell you what, he paid for this thing, but Anthony Carter shows me an awful lot. First of all, he's running free in the secondary, but watch Rodgers. He's just trying to get the ball loose, and Anthony Carter jumps up and said, thank you very much. <laughs> I and love the guy. Michigan threatens again. Carter comes off the sidelines, replaced by Giovanni Johnson, the outstanding freshman. First down, Michigan, knocking at the door again with a 7-0 lead. Hand off to Ricks. Cutting back to the 10, to the 9. Lawrence Rick slashing inside the UCLA 10-yard line. And now Michigan less than 10 yards away. A fine charge by Irv Eatman, the left tackle of UCLA, and a great cut back by Ricks. They're keying Rick so much, they be in UCLA. They're keying Rick so much, they're overrunning the play. The inside linebackers have to stay home to take the cutback. And that time they didn't do it. Ricks cut it back inside and picked up seven, six yards. 34 yards for Ricks and 10 carries at that pace. He's going to be over 100 yards for the game. Uh, Ricks again heading for the end zone. No, one yard line. I think he was down. Just a foot or so short. Ricks bounded into the end zone, but he was down inside the one. So Ricks now 40 yards plus and 13 minutes, 50 seconds to go in the first half. 
you take a look at this now, there's just straight heads on blocking. And Ricks just finds the hole, and he bounces into the end zone. He did fall on the one-yard line. It's just now a matter of time. Well, Michigan lines up Ricks at the tailback. Dan Rice, a freshman fullback, has done a great job so far. And Smith, the quarterback. Oh, there goes UCLA. No. Now, did Tom Garrity move to draw the defensive man in there? That'll be the decision of the officials. As long as he didn't touch anybody. Humphreys is the guy number 76. Procedure against Michigan. Yeah, it's number 76, Humphreys. No matter if the defensive lineman moves, as long as he doesn't touch an offensive lineman, he can get back. The offensive lineman, once he's set in his stance, cannot move. So a five-yard penalty, uh, illegal procedure against Michigan. Sets him back outside the five. There's the penalty so far. Both have been against the Wolverines. Two for 20 yards. Steve Smith looks over the defense. Goal line defense here by UCLA. Unbalanced line by Michigan. And Carter is back in there. Flank wide to the left. They give it instead to the tailback, Rick Rogers, and he's hit down by Irv Eatman. Rogers has replaced Larry Ricks. And the sophomore, they call him the hitman, was stopped by All-American Irv Eatman, number 75. Last two years, he's been a runner-up for the Lombardi Trophy. Maybe this will be his year. He's a good football player. Now it'll be third or second down for Michigan. Remember the penalty gave them back first down. Second and goal to go. Carter again wide to the left. Ricks is back in the lineup. Smith fakes his full back and keeps. He's got room. He'll score. Steve Smith scores for Michigan. The Wolverines now with a two touchdown lead early in the second quarter. Steve Smith, I don't think it was a rollout pass because they only had one receiver outside, Anthony Carter. Watch Smith. He'll take, he fakes to his fullback. Bryce, and he just sees the opening. The linebacker never got to the outside to cut him off. You've got to have an outside linebacker has got to take the quarterback, and the safety's got to come up to take the swing man. That didn't happen. Good play. Ali Hajicic now going for 40 attempts in a row on the point after. And he's got it. 14-0 for Michigan. The Wolverines have come back with a fury here today to the delight of over 100,000 partisan fans in Ann Arbor. And now it's Michigan 14, UCLA nothing. NASCAR stock car racing continues uh, on for ESPN. And the next uh, stop will be the Holly Farms 400 from North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. Darrell Waltrip was the winner last year. He's in a battle trying to catch Bobby Allison for the point championship. And you'll see this action with Bob Jenkins and Larry Newber from the North Wilkesboro Speedway Sunday, October 3rd at 2 p.m. Eastern time, live at 11 in the morning on the Pacific Coast. Scoring drive went 42 yards that time and took only two minutes and 19 seconds. Michigan six plays. They lead it 14 nothing. So Michigan suffered a little humility last week in South Bend. And now they're coming back to give a little of it back to UCLA so far. Doki Williams is winning in the end zone with uh, Jojo Townsell. And kicking off is Haja Sheik for Michigan. Headed toward the goal line. Doki Williams about a yard deep will run it out. At the 10. At the 12, and that's it. Doki Williams stopped by Boren. Mike Boren, the great linebacker for Michigan, was in for the specialty teams and a sure-handed tackle with a help from Tom Hassel. Well, UCLA has dug its uh, hold here, Paul, in the first quarter. They've given Michigan a 14-0 lead, and now can they come back? Well. When you look at UCLA, what they have to do is go to their strong point, and that's throwing the football. And don't get fancy. Just go out and take those 10-yard shots at a time, and don't try to get it all back at one time. Ramsey has Townsell to the left and Carney to the right. Now he's going to have to run it. He's taken down. Lost on the play. The great Michigan line has come up with a... Supercharged today. Kevin Brooks led the way that time from the tackle, and so was Robert Thompson, number 99 on the play. All right, Brooks and Thompson, watch number 52. First of all, Ramsey only goes back about four or five yards in the pocket. And when you get back that far, you're going to give the defensive lineman a shot to get to you, and Brooks that time got to him. Loss of four to the nine, second out and 14. Twice today that uh, 
Tom Ramsey has been sacked for UCLA by the Michigan defense. Here comes Nelson in motion. Ramsey to his own goal line. Ramsey looking. Ramsey slips and goes down inside the five. Kevin Brooks was in there again putting on pressure, but it looked like Ramsey had time to throw that time, and something happened. Whether at the last moment he decided to hold on the ball or not, I don't know, Paul. What do he, you think? Well, he was going to throw to Carney, number 83. And when you see it right here, he sees Bostic come in the, in the, into the play, and when he did it, he just slipped and fell. If he had thrown the ball, it would have been intercepted. He did the smart thing by bringing the ball down, but he still <laughs> fell down. That is not smart. Options weren't all that great, were they? Third down, UCLA in a deep hole. Inside its own five-yard line. Michigan already leading 14-0. They try to wedge it out for a little room, and the fullback, Bruno, stopped cold by Mike Warren and Paul Gergash, Kevin Brooks. All those players I mentioned for Michigan, and the Michigan Wolverines has these fans roaring here in Ann Arbor with a 14-0 lead and UCLA on the ropes. Mike Bourne, number 40, so far is playing a super game. He really is. The inside linebacker is doing such a great job. And when you're down there, you know they're going to third and 19. They're not going to throw the football. He just fills that middle. It fills it very well. All right, Kevin Bonafé and the kick out of his own end zone. Michigan back deep with Evan Cooper. Bad snap. They're off the hurry to get it away, and it's blocked up here, taken by UCLA. Player over the 15. It'll be Michigan's ball right there. Turner in to make the stop. Michigan players shake it up in the end zone, but another great break for Michigan. A bad snap. Fumble by the kicker, Bonafé. There's Thompson, who was riding on top of things, and he was shaken up on the play, it looks. Bonafé, what he should have done here, when the ball comes back, all right, he misses the ball. He just missed it. Now just take the ball and kick it out of the end zone. Take the two points. Don't set him up for a touchdown. Exactly right. Or just eat it back there. Just take the ball, throw either throw it out of the end zone or eat the ball, but don't kick the ball away. It's going to give Michigan a golden opportunity to score again. The Wolverines will have the ball on the seven. They lead 14-0, and now the Wolverines are threatening to go ahead by three touchdowns. We'll be right back. Two big games are set for college football on ESPN for the weekend of October 2nd. West Virginia at Pittsburgh. That's a great rivalry, especially for the Mountaineers. They have Hostetler going at quarterback, and they have already upset Oklahoma. Pittsburgh ranked number one in the country most of the polls, riding high with Dan Marino. The other game, Notre Dame at Michigan State. The Irish already have handled the Michigan Wolverines. Now they'll take on the Spartans of Michigan State, and both those games will be seen here on ESPN the weekend of October 2nd. West Virginia Pitt at midnight on Sunday, and then Monday, Notre Dame, Michigan at 4 and 8 p.m. Two-yard punt. That's gonna help, not going to help the average, is it? No, <laughs> you don't make that mistake. Uh, I don't know. Is he smiling? <laughs> right. He has reason to smile, but I doubt it. Bo, who's the dean of Big Ten coaches, 19 years he's been coaching. Fort, this is 14th here in Michigan. And what a great record he has. Coach of the year, 1969, his first year here. Now Steve Smith's been handed the ball in just great position. First and goal. At the UCLA 7. And see if he goes to Ricks. Yep. Lawrence Ricks up the middle. Drives it inside the 5. Stopped by Mark Barbee. Now Michigan only 4 yards away from the goal line again. Wolverine started their first scoring drive after an interception. Of Ramsey pass went almost 60 yards to score. They came back and marched again to pick up a touchdown with the 14 nothing, And now they're just... Blocked a punt in the end zone and taking the ball for first and goal. Bo Schembechler said his most satisfying win ever in the first game was over Wisconsin, but last week's game was just unrecognizable. But I think now he recognizes more of the Michigan tradition here today. Second down, Smith. Smith fires the end zone and will broke it out. Boy, he was trying to hit Craig Dunaway as tight end. That ball was bad in the air, might well have been intercepted. It was almost caught by Anthony Carter. Lang was there. West was there. But take a look at right at the end of it. Anthony Carter was right there. The ball is thrown at Dunaway. Good play to the tight end. Hits him right in the hands. But look who's the last guy to touch it. Anthony Carter. But he might have been out of the end zone. 
Another angle at it here, Paul. All right, take a look now. Watch the last guy to touch the ball. Number one, right there. Right in his hands. But he hit the great play. A little play action passes through the tight end. Here they come again. Third down play. There goes the end zone. Carter touchdown. <laughs> Anthony Carter. Another touchdown. The 30th of his great career. A record for Michigan. And Michigan now leads 20 to nothing. And list of a hand for this great All-American, Anthony Carter. Boy, do he challenge him in the crowd. Well, Anthony Carter has got super hands. Jimmy Turner, the, the right quarterback, is covering Carter. But look where this pass is. Right out in front, Turner couldn't have played it any better. He was all over Carter. Carter's got such great hands. I guess, what do you want to call them, soft hands? Yeah, well, that was a, a new Big Ten record, by the way, the 30th touchdown catch by Anthony Carter. Haji Sheik's kick is perfect, 21-0. Michigan now threatening to turn this game into a rout over the visiting UCLA Bruins, considered one of the rising powers in Western football. But it's been all Michigan so far, and the fans in Ann Arbor, chilled a week ago, love it. Ramsey again, and he's going deep to Williams. He's got him for a touchdown. Oh, Dokey oh, Williams oh, that oh, time oh. beat his man to score. Comes back with exactly the same play, Paul McGuire, and this time he hits the jackpot. Williams just ran right by body. They had double-double on the left-hand side on Carney and Townsell. And watch Williams. Watch this pass. It's right on target, but watch how he runs by body. Concentration on the ball. The biggest thing is to catch the football. The ball was there. Body just didn't get deep. And he's going to get chewed out for it because you just don't let the wide receiver get behind you. Now, let me ask you this, Paul. Do you think Doki Williams came back in the huddle that time with a little information maybe on body? Yeah, he said, I'm going to do a little move just to freeze him for a second and just let it fly. All right, here's John Lee in to kick the point after. And now the lead is back to 14. UCLA has scored. And for the Bruins, that keeps alive their long, long string. As we watch again. All right, you take a look at it. Buddy has to be one-on-one. -on -one. The guys that make this play, and people don't talk about it, Jim, is Carney and Townsell because they control the defensive secondary. There's four guys that have to cover those two guys. So it doesn't have, you don't have enough people to cover the one guy, Williams, on the other side. So you're going to go one-on-one. -on -one. They read the defense very well from the play before. You're right. He comes back in the huddle, says, hey, they've got me one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Lay it up and let me go get it. Well, let's look back. That's an impressive drive. You tend to overlook the fact that UCLA started on its own 10-yard line. So they got 90 yards against the Michigan team, which might give them some heart. But it's the 124th consecutive game in which UCLA has scored. And take a look at it right here. Williams has got body beat. There's no question. And look at the concentration on Williams. He's got his head looking at the ball. And his main concern is, I've got to get to it. It's there. Just let me get to it. God, give me feet. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's still a pretty good lead for Michigan, 21-4-7, but UCLA finally is on the boards. 80 yards they go, 5 minutes and 22 seconds in 13 plays, and UCLA scores for the first time. Last time they were shut out, by the way, was by Michigan, but it was in 1971. That was 38 nothing here, and since that time, UCLA now has scored in 124 straight games. The most impressive part about that whole drive, Thack, is, is the fact that they had two penalties on first down where they had loss of down. One was a 15-yard penalty. The other one was an 8-yard penalty because they moved the ball back on the illegal man downfield. And they still came off with a touchdown. Well, able to absorb those, which is the mark of a pretty poised team. Well coached. And they came in here well prepared. They ran into a fired up Michigan team. But now can they continue their comeback and get back in the ball game? We have 434 to go in the first half. And in here, number six for uh, UCLA, number four, Ken Potter. And Potter will kick off. Driving kick headed toward the end zone. Taken by Cooper. Johnson it is. Steve Johnson. And he's jolted pretty hard. Looked like he was a little hesitant coming out of there. And uh, that gave UCLA a chance to get down another kick. So Johnson, the freshman, a hit on the 15. 
and Michigan now will start deep here with four and a half minutes remaining in the first half, and Michigan now leads 21-7. There are the scoring drives by Michigan. They went 59 yards. That was after an interception. Went 42 yards to score after pinning UCLA deep, and then they blocked a punt in the end zone that they captured the seven and then scored. I don't want to see Michigan get conservative now. Play the kind of football that got you the 21 points. Don't be afraid to throw it. Rice is the fullback. Ricks is the tailback. Here's a handoff to Ricks. And on the power drive, off right tackle. Close to the 18-yard line. Stopped by Tom Sullivan, Don Rogers, and the UCLA secondary, and Ron Butler. At the bottom of the stack, 75, All-American Irv Eatman. Six foot six, 268 pounds, from Dayton, Ohio. Anthony Carter's back in the lineup, flank wide left. Vince Bean is out to the right. Second down play, option run by Smith. Smith pitches it out to Ricks, who's taken out of bounds and crosses the 22. Short of a first down by two or three yards. Jim, when that quarterback comes down the line, Smith, you've got to have that inside linebacker making the force. All right, take a look at coming down the line of scrimmage. Watch 27 right there. See, the inside guy has got to come up and make a force. That was Montgomery. That's the guy that, that uh, they think is one of the best linebackers they have. Well, he had some academic problems. He played in high school with John Elway and... Uh, he got over his academic problems. He got a little bit behind in practice, but here he is. And there's a fumble out of bounds, and that'll cost Michigan any chance for a first down. Don Rogers hitting Larry Ricks, and the ball shot away from him. It'll be marked right there. Was a fumble. Delacona also is in there putting on pressure. And so Michigan now will get a fourth down, and UCLA gets the ball with over three and a half minutes to go. This is that conservative football playing I'm talking about. Look at the plays in there. Montgomery's there. Delacano's there. And Michigan was fortunate to have that ball squirt out of bounds or it would have been up for grabs. And it's Don Bracken to punt. He has set Michigan records the last two years, averaging about 43 yards a kick each time, a little over last year. But this year he's been behind that, 39.4. Good kick. Yeah, that's a high enough. Fair catch being taken down here by Luke uh, Sanchez. And so UCLA now will have about 60 yards to go. That's 20 yards less than they had a few minutes ago than they did get in the score. And look for Ramsey to open it up again with three and a half minutes remaining. They got all the time in the world and do the same thing they did on the last drive. They've got two timeouts left. Be patient, take your 10 yard patterns and, and look for Carney on those little short 10 yard patterns. Uh oh, they got that formation again where they're going to have to be one on one again with Williams. They got Doki Williams to the left, Cormack and Townsell, or, or Carney and Cor Townsell are wide to the right. And there's the quick one. Look into Williams, complete over the 45 for a first down. Mike Boren trailing got the play with Burgeye for Michigan, but it was a perfectly thrown pass and a good little move on the slant by Doki Williams. And the thing about it is so you know in college football, clock stops on a first down. All right, here it is at Dokey Williams. Just a short little dump pass in the middle. He picks up the 10 yards. The clock stops until the chains are set. Then they start again. So they don't lose that much time. First and 10 at the UCLA 46. Ramsey looking down the sidelines and is caught by Townsell as he crosses the 30-yard line. At about the 29 and UCLA is back again on the right arm of Tom Ramsey. Oh yeah, I'll tell you right now, <laughs> you're looking. Bostic is talking to lot number 44. What happened is Townsell gets between the safety and the corner. Take a look at it. You see lot number 44 never got to the outside. They threw the ball to the wide side of the field. Take a look at Ramsey. He throws it out and lets Ta Townsell go after the ball. Lot never gets there. Bostic never gets there. First down. Again, they got uh, Carney and Townsell to the left and only Doku Williams to the right. Here's a handoff to the tailback. Nelson gets very little as he hits the middle of the line to the 26-yard line. Oh, Ramsey tried to cross up the Michigan defense looking for pass and shake the shifty Nelson loose. <laughs> yeah, it's a good play. Uh, you know that he's going to go back and throw the football. There's 248 in counting. He's got plenty of time. He's got two timeouts. Ramsey got a slow start here in this game, but now he's over 100 yards, 126 yards on eight out of 13. 
Four receivers out. Going to the end zone to Townsville. Great catch, and he is out of bounds. Nope, he got oh, it. no. He got it. They're going to say he caught it inside the one-yard line. What an amazing catch by Townsell, and we thought he was out of bounds. Boy, I'd like to see that again. It is a gift. Townsell was out of bounds. <laughs> there was no question about it. Take a look at Jim. He's got to get one foot down in college football. Watch where he is. Well, he may have. Wait a minute. I think he got the right foot on the sidelines. A I've, great call. We got to back up. I'm, I'll back up. I'm going to give this one to the official because the only thing I'm looking at is his knee is out of bounds. Well, we, we don't get it that. down far enough. His knee is out of bounds when it hits in the foot. It comes down in bounds. I'll give it to the official. They give it to the tailback. Now some new spell. It's a pass. Hey, what a fake. They had the man open, incomplete. They were trying to hit Burke with a tight end in the end zone. What a fake that was to the tailback Nelson. Second down, clock stops. Still lots of time. Two minutes, 29 seconds. An amazing catch by Jojo Townsell, who's now caught four passes for 73 yards. That gives him 70 passes in his career. And he's now pulled even with Cormac Carney for the number three spot all time for the Bruins. Boy, what not, a pair of receivers. I'm not retracting that because I'll tell you why. His knee came down out of bounds. I and think his foot touched inbound. He was out of bounds. Well, his foot hit first. Touchdown. Ramsey on the quarterback dive, and I think he's over. What are they waiting on? Touchdown, there it is. <laughs> but Paul, let's go back. If his foot hits first, then that's the only thing that counts, right? Yeah, but it didn't. His knee hit first. Maybe. <laughs> I love it. It's a touchdown, and UCLA is back in this football game. It's 21-13. Now, Michigan fans looking a little more concerned. All right, Rams, you just take it right up over your center. That's a little touch play. You grab your center, say, let's go, pal, and go right up the middle. And you know there's a lot of time left in this game. Two minutes, 24 seconds. It took uh, UCLA only about a minute to go 70 yards and score. Now here's John Lee to try for the kick. Lee was injured, but he has kicked perfectly so far, and he's got this one, and it's a seven-point lead. UCLA is bouncing back. They trail 21-0, and now it's 21-14 with two minutes and 24 seconds to go in the first half. What a game. It's a beautiful game, and I'll tell you right now, if Michigan plays conservative on this kickoff, again, remember, UCLA has two timeouts to waste, and they've got firepower with those wide receivers in the strong arm of Ramsey. I, again, I, you know, it, it upsets me sometimes when I watch games. Jim, is you, you don't stop doing the things that got you 21 points. Here is the quarterback sneak for the touchdown. Remember, the only the ball has to cross that line. Once that's over, it's a touchdown. But you just, you got a 21 point lead, you don't quit. Now, I don't know whether you want to call it the killer instinct, put them away or not, and you were mentioning after the 21 points, if they scored when it was 14, nothing. If it was, if it was, uh, uh, if they get 21, they could blow it out. All right, here, take a look at now. Take a look at Townsell's right knee. Don't look at his foot. Look at his right knee. See his knee out of bounds? I don't know. <laughs> that might have been a tie, Paul. Tie? <laughs> the knee and the foot may have hit at the same tie? time. Tie? <laughs> What are you doing? Are you well, I'll tell you one thing. It's 21-14, friend. And that, that's the good news for UCLA. One minute, 12 seconds it took them to drive. Ramsey gets credit for the touchdown, but it was his passing that got him down there. You betcha. It, and, two and, to two to Townsell. Townsell. And, and post, of course, that, 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 the touchdown pass to Williams was, was so beautiful. Uh, we were questioning Ramsey was a little shaky in the first quarter. But he's got his composure, and he, and he knows where his, his receivers are. And a lot of these things are timing plays, but not on when you throw a streak pattern. That's just lay it out and let him go get it. Michigan is not using Anthony Carter for the return. Ken Porter kicks off for UCLA. Backing up here is Steve Johnson. Watching it sail right over his head and out on the field of play. Automatic <laughs> touchback. That's a home run with the bases loaded. Now we have two minutes, 24 seconds to go in the first half. Michigan comes back on the field. Fully aware now that they're in a ball game and realizing that the conservative play, as Paul McGuire pointed out, was a costly factor perhaps a moment ago. And now let's see what they do. Steve Smith has got his first line in there. Rick's a tailback, Carter the wide receiver. Boy, not many smiling faces this time. Play action by Smith. Up the middle, and almost intercepted. Oh, boy, did Sanchez have that one. Would have been his fourth interception of the year, and it was right in his hand. 
Wow, they were going to Dunaway, but Sanchez was the man, number 21. Boy, that's what you call not reading the defense. Sanchez played this so beautifully. They gave the tight end, Dunaway, wide open. Now, he's going to have a little play action to his right. That's Rice he's faking to. Uh, you see Dunaway open just for a second. Sanchez played the ball so well. All he had to do was catch it. Right in his hands, second and 10 for Michigan. Clock stop with 2.19 to go in the half. Now they give it to Ricks again, a little bit of a delay. Ricks to the 25, 26 yard line. They'll be third down and four. Now is when UCLA should take one other timeout. They have two remaining and two minutes, five seconds to go. I don't think they're going to. They've already led about seven or eight seconds. There's Ricks, uh, 52 yards. So he's still on target here for a 100 yard rushing game if he can uh, play the same in the second half. That's the story and the score. Two tight ends in the game now. Caddis and Dunaway. They got to pick up four yards, and Smith will go to the air. Up the middle, caught by Dunaway, and then batted away. A loose ball, incomplete pass. It'll be fourth down. Jimmy Turner was able to knock that ball away along with Ron Butler after it looked like he was caught by Dunaway. This is something that, that a tight end has to learn. Uh, you can't teach it. You've got to learn it by experience. This ball is right on target. Smith hits Dunaway. Watch who hits. Bang. Goodbye. I'm sorry, that's Cadis. That's not Dunaway. And Turner's the guy who really hit him from the high. Just almost broke his back when you hit him, and the guy you know, relaxes after you catch the ball. You've got to catch the ball and know that you're going to get hit. All right, Sanchez back in safety. Don Bracken out in the punt for Michigan. Minute and a half to go. Great UCLA kick. will have some time. Bearcats call for and taken on the 33-yard line. And so UCLA will have the football for the final minute, 28, and you can look for it to go in the air and watch out for JoJo Tanzel. He's been the prominent receiver today for uh, quarterback Tom Ramsey. <laughs> They've got three good... You know, the thing about it is that they have not thrown the carney yet. And don't be surprised to see it. I think he's caught one. Well, he's Paul. caught that's, one. That's I'm just saying it. he's caught one pass. But I mean, not, not consistently thrown to Carney. They've used him more or less as a decoy. Carney's to the right. Townsell to the left. Over the middle on the short and the fullback. Bruno over the 40, the 41. Still trying second ever, but he was stopped right there by Mike Warren. Now a minute 17 to go. Pick up of about seven, second and three. Still no timeout. Donahue now uh, very intense on the sidelines. UCLA could get a field goal here. They'd be very much back in it. Down the middle. Tight end oh. Bergman. Great catch over the 40-yard line. Paul Bergman stopped by Gergash. Number 94. He was a receiver in high school for John Elway. There's the time, 56 seconds as they move up the chains, and UCLA is already set to go. And the clock stops on first down, so now Ramsey doesn't take that timeout. He still has 252 and counting. 39 yards to go. Sidelines, here comes to Townsell. He takes it out of bounds on the 27-yard line. Close to another first down, and it is, I believe, a first down for UCLA. And Ramsey now really is, uh, after disappointing first quarter, is clicking here in the second quarter against Michigan. He got his confidence back in throwing the football. Townsell, that time, he's gonna, he's gonna take a look at the film and he sees that Lott is breaking down and really not coming at him. He could have picked up another four or five yards and maybe able to cut it back in, but he was told to get out of bounds. That's the way that play is designed. Remember, Michigan led 21-0. UCLA has come back to put up a great uh, comeback in the second quarter. Ramsey, good protection. Ramsey firing down for Carney. Broken up at the goal line. Cormac Carney guarded by Burgai. And Burgai, number 15, broke it up for Michigan. That stops the clock with 39 seconds to go in the half. There is a play, a pass play that shouldn't have been thrown. <laughs> if you're wondering about the field goal, Potter has hit a 48-yard field goal. And from where the ball is right now, it'd be about a 44-yard attempt. What's amazing so far about this drive, Jim, is they have not used their timeouts yet. They still have two, so they've got plenty of time. It's only second down and 10. Ramsey, Carney left, Townsell to the right. Here's Ramsey. Bang to the Townsell. Look out. And it's dropped at about the one. 
JoJo Townsell had that one measured, and John Lott was able to recover. I think Townsell had him beaten when the ball was put in the air. Cooper was there, Lott was there, and that ball was just dropped right over top of Lott. Watch this pass. First of all, take a look at the blocking in the offensive line. But watch where this ball drops. Behind Lott, in front of Cooper, and it hit him right in the face. I think maybe Lott might have got a hand on the ball and tipped it a little bit, uh, Paul. Now Donahue, third down. There's one more try to pick up the first down. We'll get the field goal attempt. 34 seconds to go. Here's Ramsey. Over the middle to Carney, and it is incomplete. Broken up at the two-yard line. Third guy again on Cormac, the magnificent Carney, and Devin Cooper back on the double coverage. And so after three incompletions, UCLA faces fourth and 10 on the 27 and look for Ken Potter to try one here of about 44 yards. In comes the field goal unit. UCLA, boy, twice they had it right in the hands of receivers. Could have been seven points or six points either time. Potter will come in, uh, or though it's going to be John Lee. John Lee is going to try for the field goal. He had a groin injury. He's been kicking the points. And he will try with New Heisel holding at the 34, a 44 yard attempt. Tough angle for a sidewinder. It's a fake. New Heisel throwing, and it's a short end to play. He had a man there in Carney. Would have been short of a first down anyway, I think. Also out there was Sapali. Thompson and Lott both broke in. Incomplete pass, and Michigan gets the ball. So maybe Donahue figured at best it was a gamble from that distance for Lee anyway, so he tried to pick up a first down. You gotta admire the uh, gambling spirit of UCLA. Oh, he did. He had Cefali open, wide open early, and he just couldn't get his hand on the ball to throw the ball to him. Now Michigan with 25 seconds to go, can run out the clock here in the first half, or they may just try to surprise UCLA. Let's see what happens here for Steve Smith. 21-14 Michigan, and off is to Rick. No, it is Rick Rogers up the middle. He comes over the 35. Gets close to 10 yards, stopped by Carl Morgan. And now the clock's rolling down with 20 seconds to go. Stopped here on the first down uh, pickup. Player down where Michigan is Rogers who made that uh, pickup. He's the backup tailback to Larry Ricks from Inkster, Michigan. Tom Sullivan made the stop from... Uh... Now he's shaking up too, I guess. Sullivan's down. Well, Michigan called to go, and they still have... That gives them two timeouts left. They're looking at field goal range. Well, they have a 21-14 lead. They had a breather going... Uh, earlier in the game with a 21 nothing lead but UCLA has come back to change that Rogers had picked up 11 uh, yards and two carries and backing up Lawrence Ricks they have just been winded well they gave him nine yards 20 seconds to go in the first half well, the second half should be interesting they're just talking to him and he's pointing to his head might have got his bell rung a little bit Hey, it's where they give you the finger test. Uh, Rick Rogers will come off. You ever know that? You know the finger test? Nope. Well, they put up four fingers in front of your face, and if you say anything close to that, that's good. Six is okay. Yeah, if you say none, then they know that you're hurt. <laughs> if you say 12, they question <laughs> well, that too. No, right? no, no. Anything, any, any number other than zero. Leading rushers this game are Larry Ricks with 58 yards. Bruno, who has 15, is the leading rusher for UCLA. But their siege gun has been Tom Ramsey's passing, especially to JoJo Townsell. Michigan's ball with 20 seconds to go in the half. They lead 21-14. Play action oh, fake. Smith Carter. going down the middle, and it is for Carter with a catch of the 40. Anthony Carter, incredible catches he's made. Luffy Sanchez was all over him, and Carter took it away. Carter is as... I guess you could describe it as such great concentration because, number one, Sanchez was there to make the interception. But take a look at this ball. It's a wobbly pass, but look at the concentration by Carter. He went up, kept his eye on the ball, got his hands on the ball, came down with it. And got out of bounds to stop the clock. Sanchez, you can't cover a man any better than he does right here. Take a look at it. He's looking at ball. He's playing ball. He's got the interception in his mind. But watch what Carter does. Stops, goes up in the air, and takes the ball away. 
Well, just tremendous hands for Carter, who's now caught five today for 76 yards. Here's a flag on this play as they jumped the gun. Somebody did. Looked like Michigan. 14 seconds remaining. Michigan's only about 10 yards away from field goal range. Maybe not that far. Haji Sheik, tremendously strong leg. There's the signal. Illegal procedure. Well, that'll put him out of field goal range. Well, here, the thing about this play here is everybody's looking to the sidelines, a quick pass. Take a look at the, that tight end in the middle because you got a chance for a timeout. Going deep downfield to Bean. Out of bounds. Bean and uh, Lupe Sanchez. We're side by side down the sidelines. That leaves nine seconds to go in the first half. And now let's see if he tries uh, a little sideline pass here just to get the field goal range. That was the play because he had done away number 88 coming across the middle. He was open. If he picks up that extra 10 or 15 yards, you're right in field goal range. Only time for one play if they have field goal in mind. They've got Carter to the left side and Vince Bean to the right. He's looking for Carter. He throws his stick with a man coming out of the backfield. This is Dan Rice, the fullback to the 35. And they got one second, and time has run out. And I don't think they got timeout call. Ron Butler made the stop, but time has run out here in the first half. And now, wait a minute, they're still discussing things on the field. Referee Jerry Hendrickson's coming over. And don't go away yet. UCLA's left the field, but Michigan's staying out there. And the referee's saying, put one second back on. UCLA's going to have to come back out of the dressing room. Michigan got the timeout call before time uh, ran out. <laughs> wow. Well, this will see about a 50-yard field goal attempt by Michigan. Haji Sheik is on the field of the tee. He'll try from 52 yards. And there's some of the UCLA players having to be called back to the dressing room tunnel. And look at Coach Donahue. I think he is really upset with the official because what happens? You've got to understand something. The quarterback is the man that can call a timeout. Now Smith had to run all the way over to the receiver to get to the official. Officially, to the official, the clock ran out. But somebody else said, well, wait a minute. He got to you a little bit early. I, you know, this, I guess all calls by officials are all judgment calls. Well, you've got a hundred and some thousand people to worry about. It may be academic. 52 yards, is, uh, that would be quite a field goal attempt by Haji Sheik. But he's going to get a chance, it would appear. Number six, Ali Hajashik. He's now kicked 41 consecutive points after. And in field goals, he's won for two this year, but he has kicked 20 in his career. Now they're going to call timeout. UCLA calls timeout, and I, I would take another one after that. Give him something let to him, think about. Let him think. He's still got one left. And you can't use them at halftime, right? Oh, no. I mean, they're not going to get the ball back unless they block this baby. <laughs> but there's going to be one second run up anyway. There's always a possibility they could run the kick back for a touchdown. And remember another thing. The half cannot end on, on a, a penalty. defensive penalty. That's on exactly a defensive right. penalty. That's exactly right. Well, there's uh, the UCLA defense. They're huddling around. In fact, Bob Field or Tom Hayes, defensive coordinators, one of them. And Haji Sheik has uh, been getting a little nice. He's, he's grinning down there in the uh, huddle. But they're giving him a little more time to think. Jim Donahue is absolutely livid. He's talking to the official. He's, this is wrong, and they're going to protest the game, I would imagine. I don't, has anybody ever won a protest? I don't think so. <laughs> in the history? Not that I can recall. Maybe in a pool game somewhere down the line. Horse racing, I think they can Haji, do that. Yep, you can do that, that's for sure. Haji Sheik from 52 yards, a field goal try for Michigan. Ah, that could be costly. Well, it depends. Did the center make a movement with the ball? Uh, if he, he made a movement, it'll be against Michigan. Watch the referee, Hendrickson. Illegal procedure, UCLA. That's going to help Haji Sheik. Boy, I'm surprised UCLA would take that gamble for the 52 yards. And that's 47, and that's a, that's quite a difference. Yeah, certainly it. Well, five yards. <laughs> well, I mean, but this range, it really can make a difference. Yeah. He's yeah, right on the border of his range. Once that center and the lineman gets set, they can't move. And that's what UCLA was watching. They're watching the center over the ball. And the guys that were offside were the two guys that were over the nose of the ball. Now it's a 47-yard attempt by Haji Sheik. Here's his kick. He gets it away. Looks long enough. And he's got it. The five yards might have made the difference. 
Haji Sheik cashes in, and Michigan has scored in the final second of the first half for a 10-point lead. So that's the end of the first half at Ann Arbor in a thriller. It is Michigan 24, UCLA 14. Hello everyone, Greg Gumbel back with you in the ESPN Sports Center newsroom. A reminder to you, Roger Twible and I will be by at 7.30 Eastern Time, 4.30 Pacific with the half hour edition of the Sports Center. One of the things we'll be bringing you up to date on is Major League Baseball. Let's take a look at the schedule right now. In the American League, a doubleheader underway at Toronto. Minnesota has come to bat in the first inning. Viola for the Twins, Clancy for the Blue Jays. No score as yet in that game. Game number two will feature Felton and Gott, the opposing pitchers, Minnesota at Toronto. Later on this evening at Fenway Park in Boston, Doc Medich will go for the Milwaukee Brewers, Chuck Rainey for the Red Sox, Baltimore will be at Detroit, it'll be Scotty McGregor for the O's, and Dan Petrie for the Detroit Tigers. The Yankees will be at Cleveland, Doyle Alexander looking for his first win of the year, Rick Sutcliffe will go for the Cleveland Indians, Oakland at Texas, it'll be Conroy against Mason there, Seattle at Chicago, Moore against Dennis Lamp, and California at Kansas City, the Angels can clinch the American League West title with a victory at Kansas City tonight, Witt will be on the mound for the Angels, and Larry Gura for the Kansas City Royals. In the National League, last night the St. Louis Cardinals clinched the Eastern Division title. Therefore, that game against Montreal this evening will be practically meaningless. St. Louis will send force to the mound against Steve Rogers for the Expos. The Cubs will be at Philadelphia. Doug Bird for Chicago, Larry Christensen for the Phillies. Pittsburgh at New York. Candelaria on the mound for the Pirates. Ed Lynch for the New York Mets. Houston will be at San Diego. It'll be Bob Nepper against Tim Lawler in that one. Atlanta at San Francisco. Rick Mailer faces Bill Lasky. And Cincinnati at Los Angeles. Frank Pastore goes against Bob. Bob Welch. We'll be back here to the newsroom with more for you in just a moment. Tuesday on ESPN, topical sports issues are the focus of attention when a panel of experts meets for another edition of Sports Forum. Then a college football doubleheader comes your way. First, John Bond leads the charge as the Mississippi State Bulldogs take on the Florida Gators. Then the Michigan Wolverines, hungry for a win after their upset loss to Notre Dame, try to chew up the UCLA Bruin defense. It's a terrific Tuesday lineup of sports, and it's all on ESPN. NBA News, the Cleveland Cavaliers announced today that they have signed their number one draft choice, guard John Bagley, to a three-year contract. Bagley is the former Boston College star who averaged uh, almost 22 points a game last season. He was the 12th player picked overall in the NBA draft last June. The Milwaukee Bucks opened their rookie and free agent camp today and announced that they have signed veteran uh, free agent guard Charlie Chris to an offer sheet. The San Diego Clippers will now have 15 days to match that offer or to trade him. The Bucks also waived three-year veteran forward Jeff Crompton. Crompton, 6'11", 290 pounds. He reported overweight, and the Bucks have let him go. Let's rejoin college football action now. Michigan leading the UCLA Bruins 24-21 in the third quarter. ESPN will be in Charleston, South Carolina. That's where they say the Cooper and the Ashley come together to form the Atlantic. And they'll be aboard the USS Yorktown for top ranked boxing on September 30th. And this will be a main bout featuring junior welterweight Robin Blake against Carlos Santana, a hometown favorite down there from Camden, South Carolina. So don't miss that action. 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 5.30 Pacific, Thursday, September 30th. Well, uh, UCLA did not waste an opportunity. They jumped on the interception. And uh, they rolled in the score, 22 yards and five plays, and it's now 24-21. Jim Potter for UCLA, the kicker, lines the ball up on the hash mark. And what this does, he tries to drill it right down the hash mark. It cuts that left-hand return off. They want to force Michigan to come up to the weak side, the short side of the field. Don't give them the running room. Well, there it is. And this is going to go out of play, I think, backing up is Johnson. And watches it go over his head out of bounds. So they'll bring it out to the 20, and there will be Michigan's ball first and 10. And Michigan now has got to start thinking about more points in this game. Again, you know, you go back to, to the thing. Don't quit doing what got you the 21 points, not the 24 points. because that, But again, that pass to Carter, and then again, the pass back to Ricks again. They set up the field goal, plus the penalty. Well, momentum definitely is on UCLA's side. They have outscored Michigan 21 to 3 after the Wolverines jumped ahead 21 0. Steve Smith had a fabulous first half through the air. Let's see if he goes back in there. Here's a, here's a reverse to Anthony Carter. 
Carter looking for a block, and he is taken down at the 30, but it'll be a sizable gain. Close to a first down. Tom Sullivan, the strong safety, made the stop, along with number 40, Carl Morgan. Well, that's, uh, he puts more excitement into a game, uh, Paul, than anyone I can recall. He does it all, doesn't he? This is a reverse from the quarterback, not from a halfback now. He's looking at his blockers out front. And at Humphreys, number 76, the blocker out front, gets an excellent block. Anthony Carter picks up nine yards. I guess you really technically have to call that kind of an end around more than a reverse. It is second and inches here. Let's see if Smith tries to get cute now and catch uh, UCLA looking for the run. Nope, he's going to hand it off to Ricks, and he's got the first down. All the way over the 35-yard line, and up to the 37 goes Larry Ricks, a senior tailback from Barberton, Ohio. He had a great sophomore year, 850 yards, playing in the same backfield with Butch Wolfham. And now he's taking over first string. There's the first down situation. UCLA actually has the edge there, although they trail in the game 24-21. Wide receivers both sides here for Steve Smith. Gives it to fix the fullback pitches to Ricks, and Ricks is beautiful oh. tackle by Rogers. Boy, Don Rogers came flying from free safety and made his final open field tackle. That's exactly the way they teach it. Yeah, Rogers is, is he just had the interception a little while ago, and you're going to see the man. The linebacker comes down the end of the line and takes the quarterback. Rogers comes up and takes the fullback. Now, when you look at a guy like Ricks, He's 5'10", 195 pounds. And I guess the expression, he plays bigger than that, really applies to this young man. He is so strong in his legs, his thighs. And you better get him around the ankles to bring him down. Second and eight call now for Steve Smith of Michigan. Deep handoff to Ricks. Ricks breaks, uh, breaks one tackle. And he stops short of the 45. It'll be a third down call for Michigan, about three yards to go. Ricks came here with outstanding credentials from Barberton, Ohio, which, by the way, is Bo Schimbeckler's hometown. So. Oh, that's right down the road from me, Youngstown, Ohio. That's right. That's great football territory. Camp McKinley used to play Maslin. Those were great games, weren't they? We played Maslin once when I was in high school. We lost 17 players. We never played them again. It was only a scrimmage. <laughs> of course, Paul Brown's teams are legendary, aren't they? Back in the years ago. Wait a minute, I'm not that old. Third down and three for Michigan. They got a sort of a double slot. And now in motion goes Dunaway, the tight end. They pitch it back to Ricks, and Ricks is going to be thrown for a loss. Fourth down coming up. UCLA fired up again. Great defensive play by Ron Butler, an inside linebacker who fired the gap that time, and he guessed right. Why conservative football? I'm going to ask you that, Jimmy. Why conservative football? You were throwing the ball so well in the first half. Butler just comes across, sees Ricks, and they make the play, and he gets help on the outside. By well, number 35, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Turner. Tr Jimmy Turner, the right corner linebacker. And they'll Sanchez gets so much publicity, uh, the UCLA coaches say, well, Turner's just as good, we think. Here's uh, Don Brack in the punt now for Michigan. And waiting will be Tom Sullivan for UCLA. Good punt. Sullivan, no far catch. He takes it, and he takes the punishment right at the 20-yard line. He was really chill that time. And put down as he caught the ball by Bostic. Now, there's a great player for you, that uh, safety, Keith Bostic. He may be, uh, later on in history, called the greatest safety in Michigan's uh, football past, and that's quite a colorful uh, background. Seen a lot of those guys. Carter, oh Haji Sheik. First and 10, UCLA. Michigan fans here, 105,000 plus. They're exhorting the Wolverines to dig in defensively, try to stop this passing attack of Tom Ransom. Ramsey drills it to the sidelines, caught by Carney out of bounds. Completed pass, Cormac Carney, Hassel and Burgeye were there. They've got to run this play more often on first down, because in a first down situation, what Michigan's trying to do is, is cover with the corner. Burgeye is trying to cover Carney one-on-one, but he's giving him 10 yards. The linebackers are not getting back to the outside, and that's what the big problem is. They're not getting help. Now, Hassel, Number 48 was a linebacker. Didn't get deep enough. They got the same situation again. Sapali's in there. Nelson is really caught for a loss. Michigan smelled that play coming. It was a delay, and Sinchitz, the middle guard, was almost there to take the handoff from Ramsey. They tried to fool the Michigan defense looking for a pass and run a draw play, and Sinchitz, the middle guard, that's his responsibility. And how about this for, for playing that play? Well, Sinchitz comes up, and Nelson 
It's right there. Thank, thank goodness he held on to the football, but nobody blocked him. He just threw the center out of the way, and the nose guard, there's nobody to block him because the fullback is going the other way. Loss of six, second down and 16 for UCLA. Trailing by three. Ramsey got a hurry. Sacked at the 20. Cinchich again. Al Cinchich with two big plays in a row for Michigan's defense, and Paul Giergash was in that time to help him. Well, listen to what you were talking about, that you've got to have heat by the defensive line. Ramsey in the first half had no heat on him. A couple times they got to, you know, close to him, but they really didn't get the heat on him. This defensive line has got to do it because they don't send the linebackers that often. Well, UCLA's today, you saw he stared right in the face of Gergash, and then here comes Mr. Sinchitz again. Third now you two. Yep, third, really long now, and you, Michigan uh, loves to have a team in this situation. They can tee off on it. Ramsey. Ramsey gets away. Won't get along for long. There's Gierkeis to take him down. And he'll be short of a first down by a quarter of a mile. Sinchitz and Thompson were in, giving heat to Ramsey. And he started upfield. There was number 50, Gierkeis waiting. All right, they're using a four-man rush here. And Ramsey goes back, and he just can't find anybody open. Good play by the defensive secondary. He does the one smart thing. Get as much yardage as you can so you have some room for your punting team. Well, Kevin Budafay comes in, number 17, left-footed kicker. He's averaging about 41 yards a kick. And back from Michigan now is Evan Cooper. Low kick. Cooper may have time to run it back at the 35, 40. Breaks a tackle and take it down to the 42. About a seven-yard return by Evan Cooper. Those low kicks sometimes get down there before the coverage, and they'll give you a chance to run it back. Turner made the stop for UCLA. Uh, now Michigan takes over again with 7.53 to go in the third quarter. And we got a close one going in Ann Arbor. Michigan 24, UCLA 21. All right, you tennis fan takes note of, uh, note of this. ESPN continues live coverage of the Davis Cup. This will be a semifinal between the USA and Australia. From down under, Perth, Australia, Jim Simpson, Cliff Drysdale. Boy, what a rugged assignment for them going down. <laughs> Yeah, and send the action by. But of course, McEnroe will be there, and uh, so are Peter Fleming, and they'll be going against Peter McNamara and Paul McNamee, and the outcome of that will send them on the finals. We'll have the singles for you on Friday, October 15th at 5 a.m. Eastern Time. It's early in the morning, and then the doubles match Saturday, October 2nd at 2 in the afternoon, 11 o'clock on the West Coast, and then the singles the last day. Hopefully, we'll have it wrapped up by then, but anyway, that's Sunday, October 3rd at 5.30 in the morning. All live from down in Perth, Australia. Smith on the delay gives to Ricks up the middle. Good opening, and he powers his way to 50. Oh, a rugged run that time by Larry Ricks, Irv Eatman, and Don Rogers. A couple of nifty players bring him down. Well, we'll look at the UCLA. There's uh, Bruno. Some of the others looking on the sidelines for UCLA. They really got back in the ball game by scoring early in the third period, and there's a lot of football left in this one. 7.23 to go in the third period. Ricks now at 76 yards on 23 carries. Here he goes again. Larry Ricks, first down over the 45-yard line to the UCLA 44. Ricks, who had a big game against... Uh, Wisconsin with 153 yards. He'll have to go some to match that, but he has a good chance to get 100 and should. He's rushed for 1,363 yards at Michigan and scored 16 touchdowns. He's out of the game now. Rodgers is back in the backfield. That's Rick Rodgers, just a sophomore. First down play for Michigan. Hand off to Rodgers. He runs into a lot of white shirts. And he's smothered around the 42. Michigan content to run the football instead of throwing. Well, it's uh, the style of Ocean Beckley. Loves to keep that ground game established. Terry Donahue for UCLA. The only man ever to play for UCLA in the Rose Bowl and then later coach them. Now play action fake by Smith. Over the middle he goes wide open but tight end Dunaway and it's right through his hands. Boy, he was so open. That's unbelievable. He caught UCLA in a zone. He got right in the middle. 
Remember I told you don't forget about the tight end. You got to keep a guy on the tight end. He had to make the turnaround. Here's a play action pass. Smith goes back and Dunaway is open down the middle. But watch, he has to turn. And when he makes that turn, he can't get his hands up. The ball went right through his arms. Incomplete pass. It's now third and eight for Michigan. They're at the UCLA 42. Carter's on the right side. He's been the big play man today for Michigan as usual. They check Carter here. Smith running on the play now. He's going to get the first down. He's over the 35 to the 32. A broken play again. And out of the scramble, Steve Smith picks up a key first down for Michigan, perhaps. Jimmy Turner on the stop for UCLA with Don Rogers. UCLA secondary, they, he was going all the way to Anthony Carter. Look at over here. They double teamed Carter, wouldn't let him off the line of scrimmage. The defensive line now has to get to the quarterback and not let him run with the football. While he's taken down, that's the fourth time that Smith has been able to pick up a first down on nine third down plays. There's the attendance we told you, 105,413. That's the ninth biggest crowd ever in Michigan State. They give it to Rick Rogers, and Rogers is close to the 27-yard line. They're giving Ricks a little rest, and Rick Rogers, a sophomore, has come in to replace him. He scored two touchdowns this year. Mike Barbie made the stop for UCLA. Smith, now in addition to his passing, has also picked up 32 yards rushing for Michigan. Interesting uh, duel here between these two quarterbacks. Isn't it every, what, every four times that uh, Anthony Carter touches the ball, he's a touchdown? <laughs> I think I throw it him about 40 times a game. I mentioned uh, Donahue playing for his alma mater. Bo Schimbecker, of course, played for Woody Hayes. There's a pitch out to Rodgers that didn't work. It'll be a loss for Michigan. Jimmy Turner was right on top of the play, but it looked like Rodgers lost his footing before the defensive man got there. UCLA that time, they were just coming down the line of scrimmage with the linebackers. It was, there was no chance for Smith, and he, he threw the ball. Rodgers was lucky to get the ball. Time remaining is just under five minutes in the third quarter. Michigan 24, UCLA 21. Carter's the bottom of your screen, flank wide. He's got a lot of feel over here. He's being double teamed. Sanchez right with him. Now here is Smith. Smith being chased out of the pocket. And here is Smith dumping it off. And it was caught here beautifully by Rice, the fullback. He'll be way short of a first down, but they avert a long loss. Don Rogers on the stop. And Smith was just running for his life. You know, it really is a frustrating thing for a defensive lineman to chase a quarterback all over the place, and then just as you get to him, he gets the ball away. Take a look what happens here. Smith is thinking about running now. Now he's forced back out of the pocket. And the heat is on him. That's Montgomery, the linebacker, chasing him. And finally, when he gets to him, he dumps the ball off. Rice fumbles the ball. That's the second time that Michigan has fumbled the ball out of bounds. Well, they're going to try over the field goal. It'll be a 48-yard attempt by Hajishik, who already has tied the Michigan record with his 21st field goal. And here, this one looks long enough. And I think he's got it. Yes, it is good. Hajishik from 48 yards, his second long field goal of the day. And the Michigan lead is up to six. So UCLA will get the ball when we come back. They'll be trailing by six. Michigan 27, UCLA 21. Since it was the only way to play Pac-Man on my TV, I got a video game system from Atari. Am I glad? Because it's also the only way to play Haunted House. It's almost too spooky, especially in the dark. And Atari system's also the only way to play Defender at home. I can't think of a faster game, can you? Think fast. Then there's Yara's Revenge, an Atari original. Only Atari lets me play all these great home video games. Wonder what they've got waiting in the wings. Well, Michigan has a new all-time field goal kicking champion now. Ali Hajashik, number six, just kicked his 22nd of his career. That's, that's a new Michigan record. Doki Williams waiting back deep for UCLA, and here comes Hajashik. Aiming for the end zone. Williams is over there. He takes it at the goal line. 10 to 15 to the 20. 25, looking for a block. 40, 45, 50. Doki Williams is taken out of bounds after a spectacular run back at the Michigan 35-yard line. It was John Lott, the last man, a chance to get him. 
Well, Williams, they kicked the ball to the right-hand side for UCLA, left-hand side for Michigan, and once that hole opened up, Williams just let it go. You saw him catch that pass from Ramsey earlier in the first half. Now, here's the kick. Watch this thing break down. He's going to get two good blocks right there on the right-hand side. We don't see him. Then he breaks it back to the outside, and Lott is the last man. He's trying to pick it up. Haji Sheik has a shot at him. You can forget that. And then Lott brings him down. 65 yards in return for Doki Williams. He's a fine track star at uh, UCLA. Long jump and triple jump. And now he puts UCLA in great shape. Here's a draw play. They hand it off to Bruno. Flag is down. Bruno stopped after uh, just a very modest game down to around the 32 by Tom Hassel. There's the conference. You guess here maybe this would be against UCLA. Well, let's watch. It is illegal motion against the offense. So Michigan are going to ask for a five-yard penalty, or they can take the play, which uh, gained about three yards. Probably take the penalty. Oh yeah. You, you, you know what's amazing? You see a, a motion penalty against an offense who goes on the first sound. That's it's really hard to believe that they would do that, you know. But everybody's anticipating. We want to go right away. We want to go right away. They're jumping. Brian Wiley now is coming at fullback. There are the penalty story. Kevin uh, Nelson, tailback, the only running back now behind. And here he comes in motion. Ramsey, Ramsey, got a man wide open. Jojo Townsell inside the 25-yard line for another first down for UCLA. Stopped on the 22nd by Evan Cooper, but the elusive Townsell slips open once more. Jim not only slips open, he was so wide open, it was unbelievable. Ramsey got back there. I think Ramsey was a little bit in shock. Take a look at it. He's looking off to his right. And then Townsell comes right open. In, there's nobody around him. Then there's a lot of, I'll tell you, that, doesn't that ball draw a crowd? Oh, boy. <laughs> look at this. But it's the first time for UCLA. Bruins now beginning to threaten again from the Michigan 22. Touchdown, the point after would give them the lead. They're trailing by six. Plenty of time. There it is, the corner to Carney. And he's out of bounds. That looked like an excellent call. Carney had to lunge for that ball, try to get his foot down inbounds, and he missed. Hassel and Burgau were covering for Michigan. Senchitz was trying to put pressure on Ramsey, and he pulled it on the trigger just a little bit too much. Might have been Senchitz's play there that rushed Ramsey that did it. There it is. He's out of bounds. There's no question. He cannot get his right foot down. He has no chance for left foot. But look at the concentration. Well, here we go now on uh, second down and 10. Ball at the Michigan 22. Ramsey has the Michigan fans jittery here with his area. All out blitz over the middle, incomplete, going to the tight end Bergman. They had a man for man coverage on a three man pattern that time, but uh, Michigan was coming with about seven or eight men. And he had the blocking. Ramsey panicked just a little bit because the offensive line and, and, the, and the backs picked up everybody coming in. All he had to do was just wait that one more. It's easy for us to say sitting up here. Well, he we don't see eight guys coming at you. But Paul, what he had was man for man coverage with those three guys. I'll tell you what, Townsell and Carney, I don't think he can cover them very well. Not man to man. You better have an all out blitz and you better hope that somebody gets to the quarterback. Third and 10 for UCLA. You got to hand it to Michigan defense on the first two plays of this series. Safali's up there here. He's going down to Carney and he's got it out of bounds inside the five. Cormac Carney makes the catch. First and goal for UCLA. I can't impress upon people how well Ramsey throws that ball. The touch of this man. Now, Carney does catch the ball, but look where it is. It's right over the shoulder of Burgai. Burgai has got to watch the receiver. Once he turns, he loses the ball. Carney gets the ball, and it is foot was on the line. Now, the difference between <laughs> that play and the one before that didn't count was maybe about four inches. Yeah, and that time his foot was on the line. That counts. That counts. First and goal, UCLA. <laughs> they could take the lead with a touchdown and point after. Michigan uh, goal line defense. They give the tailback Nelson. Nelson at the two. Kevin Nelson looking for daylight. Gets into about the two-yard line. Picks up a yard. Robert Thompson uh, checks him right there, and it's second down and goal for UCLA. Wow, this game gets you breathless, uh, Paul McGuire. Well, the way they're moving back and forth, the only thing about it is that, that UCLA scored seven points in this first, in the second half. Michigan only a three-point field goal, and they're knocking on the door again. So the defense is adjusted, and the offense is doing what they did in the second quarter. Here's Safali in motion again. 
They come on the power sweep. They pitch to Nelson. Nelson cuts back, scores. Nelson on the touchdown, and UCLA has pulled even. After trailing by 21 points, the Bruins from California have come back to tie the score, and they got a chance now to take the lead. Number 42, the fullback, Bruno. He got a great block on Burguy, and then Nelson just trots into the, into the end zone. Now watch number 42 coming out in your picture. Here he comes right at you. Here comes Burguy, number 15. Oh, Goodbye. Boy. He really chilled him. Also, you saw that Bourne got knocked down on the play by another good block, and that made it easy for Kevin Nelson to score. Another touchdown for Nelson. He's a brother, by the way, of uh, Darren Nelson, who played for the Vikings. There's the kick to take the lead for UCLA. They've got it. The Bruins have fought their way back to take the lead for the first time. Two minutes and 50 seconds to go in the third quarter in a dazzling display of offense in Ann Arbor before 105,000 plus. It is now UCLA 28, Michigan 27. Well, here's what put UCLA in the lead for the first time. 35 yards, keyed by the tremendous kickoff return by Doki Williams, 65 yards. That uh, gave him the ball deep. And now UCLA leads 28-27. Quite a long string in the, on the line here. Michigan has not lost to a Pac-10 team under Bo Schembechler's coaching in regular season. They have won the last 10 played here and 19 out of the last 21. Jimmy, you got to give an awful lot of credit. Now, this game is far from over. There's 250 in the third quarter. But, you know, you take a look at 21 points down UCLA to keep their composure and to come back in this football game just to get ahead by one is phenomenal. Michigan now sending back uh, deep Rick Rogers and he's going to watch the ball go right through that it was Johnson who got the last uh, view of it along with Rogers and it's kicked out of play one more time by Ken Potter and Michigan will start the 20 and now will Michigan go back to the air with Steve Smith where they were so successful in the early part of the game to take a 21 point lead or not Paul well I think he has to go back but Ricks is the guy. You remember on that last drive, he wasn't in the game. Rogers was in the game. Now Ricks is back there. Him come out throwing. All right, Dan Rice at fullback. Ricks is the tailback. They give it a deep hand off to Ricks. A little misdirection. He goes to the left side to the 25. Five yard pickup for Michigan. Don Rogers blew in from free safety to make the stop. Ricks is explosive. He finds holes. They kind of set the flow to the right and then move Ricks back to the left. They try to get the UCLA over committing here on its pursuit and then give some running room back against the grain. Almost worked. Wide receivers are Bean to the right and Anthony Carter, who's been explosive today, to the left. And here's the play action by Smith. He's caught behind the line and thrown for loss by Eaton. Herb Eatman, the All-American tackle number 75, 268 pounds, six foot six. And what a difference it's been for UCLA since they shifted that big guy from the left side, the right side to the left. I'll tell you what, he, you talk about a paw on a guy, <laughs> he gets his paw on him. Look at this. He's back there. Smith says, I'll, I'll get away from this. <laughs> Wrong one hand <laughs> and just drilled him into the ground. <laughs> for the count. Well, you remember he slacked to Art Schleister four times in that memorable game against uh, Ohio State. Back in the pocket goes Smith. Sidelines incomplete. Intended for the fullback Rice. And great coverage on the play over here by Neil Delacono. Delacono not only had the play diagnosed, had Rice covered, but he also knocks the ball away. Watch his hand. Bing. Well, his hand comes in around, knocks the ball out of his hand. He actually would have picked up about four or five yards, which wouldn't have been enough. It only got him back to the original line of scrimmage. That's about all. So it's fourth down. Michigan has to pump, and UCLA looking for great field position. They got 10 men on the line. Let's see if they try to block this. No, no, no. I don't believe they will. No, no. Drop some people back now. Sullivan right. is back here to return it. Here's Bracken with the punt. Nice kick. Oh, beautiful punt. Tremendous punt. Back is Sullivan at the 35-yard line. Uh, Sanchez, rather, and he takes it up to the 40. Number 21, Lupe Sanchez was back that time. Sweeney was down under the punt to make the stop. Great punt by Bracken. That uh, punt went about 50 yards. And a five-yard return, and now it's UCLA's ball on the 38. Now we reverse the situation, Tech. Don't stop doing what got you to 28 points. 
I'm not repeating myself because UCLA knows that they can throw the football. They have not been throwing the foot, running the football very well against Michigan. Throw the ball. They got the two dangerous receivers, both to the left, Carney and Townsell. Doki Williams to the right. Looks like maybe Ramsey's checking off the play. Here's Ramsey on a handoff to Nelson. Thrown for a loss. It's a 35 by Kevin Brooks. Brooks number 52. Sophomore tackle, rangy guy, six foot seven. Used to be a linebacker. They converted him to tackle, and this sophomore from Detroit is coming through. Ramsey, you're not listening to me, boy. All right, here it is. And Nelson, a little handoff. And no, just no place to go. You gotta be able to block a guy 6'7. You gotta be able to find him, can't you? He's got a target. Loss of a couple, second down and 12 for the Bruins. Townsell's got all the room he wants. He's got 10 yards out there. Less than a minute to go in the third period, and the officials have, or, or Michigan rather, has called timeout. Now, why for that with uh, 48 seconds to go in the third period? And a close ball game like, well, they can see why. Bostic had lost his shoe. Mr. Bostic lost his shoe, and he's supposed to get that done in the huddle. Couldn't get it back on. Michigan has outrushed UCLA 130 to 27 yards. But it's been in the air that UCLA has written the story here today. Number 31 there for uh, UCLA is Donatelli. We keep seeing Free him safety. all the time. Well, he, He's a sort of a backup guy for Don Rogers, but Rogers has played so well today, he's got a little chance to get in there. Now here's Ramsey, number 14. What a day he's having. Cormac Carney, our All-American candidates in there. So is Jojo Townsell. And Paul Bergman, the tight end. So his front line troops for the pass receiving job is in the lineup. A little gathering gloom here for Michigan. Things have quieted down since that 21-0 start. All right, so you're going to have Carney out here one on one with Burgay. He's going, and he's got the short man Nelson out of the backfield, and Nelson gets away almost, but he's dropped down on the 40. So four yard line. That'll be short of a first down by three or four yards by Robert Thompson. If Thompson doesn't make that tackle, then it's a first down easy. Yeah, uh, Nelson is running for a little while. All right, Thompson, now you got to remember, here he comes in, makes a play, just grab. You know what he grabbed on? He grabbed on that towel. He Absolutely. Had. He got the towel, and that was the difference. And so it's third down for UCLA with four yards to go. This could be the last play of the third period. One point lead by UCLA. Ramsey has passed for 270 yards, and there's some more on the look in. It'll be a first down as he goes immediately. Burgai made the stop, but the catch in there gives a first down by Cormac Carney, and UCLA's drive will be continuing as we'll head into the fourth period. Two seconds to go. They move up the chains. Two more ticks, and the third period is history. There it is. The third quarter is over in Ann Arbor. And we have an exciting scoring duel here between two national powers. One quarter to go, UCLA 28, Michigan 27. Now the fourth and final period will be underway in Ann Arbor as uh, Ramsey brings there, gets Toa Sapali in at fullback. Jojo Tanzel returns. He is flanked wide to the right side. And Carney's been replaced by another tight end. Harper Howell is in. So Howell and Bergman, two tight ends. They run it to Nelson to the short side, and he is dropped after a short game by Mike Warren. Second down about eight. Boy, this is passing attack of UCLA as the Michigan defense perplexed, <laughs> to say the least. I guess. I guess so. Jim and Ramsey is just throwing the ball so well. When he sees that matchup on the outside, and when he's throwing it in, even into double coverage, he gets the corner man up short in the safety deep, and, and, he, and there's no way that the safety can get to the wide receiver. Look at that, 276 yard passing for UCLA, and the rushing is about even. Ramsey drills it hard. He's got his tight end, Bergman, over the 35 for another first down. Stopped on the 32 yard line by John Lott, and there's big Paul Bergman, who had caught eight passes coming in this game for 139 yards, one touchdown, comes through with a key catch. Yeah, but he's trying to cover Bergman Michigan is trying to cover with gear gash number number 50 and again that is tough coverage for a linebacker you see gear gash going for the ball he misses it and he gets help from lot downfield 
but anytime you get that matchup, a linebacker on a tight end, you've got to go to your tight end. Look at those stats, 21 almost, of 32. Almost 300 yards. Townsell's over 100 yards. Carney is close to 100 yards. Here's Ramsey again being chased in the pocket. Ramsey now running down the sidelines, out of bounds around the 30. Gets a short gain and doesn't risk the interception. Kevin Brooks and Al Sinchich were really putting the pressure that time to number 14, Tom Ramsey. And thank goodness they had the pressure on because he had Townsell wide open on lot on the left-hand side. He's looking now, but he sees the pressure coming. So he breaks to the outside. This is what makes this guy so effective. He is a good athlete. Look at him. He goes down and gets the extra two yards, and that's the two yards they picked up. Now it's second and eight. But he knows he has presence of mind to know where he is on the field, Jim. Well, he's in striking uh, range, Paul, at the 30-yard line of Michigan. Here's Thompson got him down for a sack. Robert Thompson broke in that time on Ramsey. There was no escaping that time. It'll be third down and long yardage for UCLA. And again, he was looking back out to Townsell because he's got him one-on-one -on -one with Lott out there, and Lott hasn't been able to cover him all day long. But this young man is creating havoc in the backfield. Someone's got to block him. Well, Thompson's one of the tri-captains for Michigan. Had a shoulder separation last year and a hand injury to boot, but he's been rated one of the best outside men that Michigan has, and he's proved it today. Third and 13 for UCLA. Here's Ramsey. Gets it off. It is complete to the fullback. Dancing through here is Wiley inside the 20. And if he has a first down. Brian Wiley on a little release pass. And if there's ever a man that was rare there at the right time, that was the play. And he made a great run after he caught the ball. But the guy, again, this Thompson, number 99. Watch where he ends up, right in the face of Ramsey. There he is. He's the guy that went down on the ground. Well, watch this pickup now. Wiley is there, picks up the first down. UCLA keeps the drive alive. You can't stop the passing game. That's the 18th first down for UCLA. Now they're knocking again inside the Michigan 20-yard line. Leading 28-27, the Bruins threatening to widen the lead. Ramsey over the middle, incomplete. That was intended for Paul Bergman, the tight end, and Boren was covering. Stops the clock. We're early in the fourth period, 12 minutes and 35 seconds to go. And UCLA has come from behind by 21 points to lead it by a point, 28-27. You know, it's easy for us seeing up here. That time, Carney was wide open in the end zone. But when you got the pressure, the defensive line for Michigan is doing a great job against the offensive line of UCLA right now. Here's the pitch now. Back it comes to Cephas. Cephas circling the left side, stays on his feet, fighting, and gets out of bounds inside the 10. Tremendous second and third effort that time by Frank Cephas, number 46, a junior tailback or fullback. He plays both spots. All right, watch Cephas here. Watch how many tackles he breaks. There's one. And a hand on the ground, that's two. There's three. Takes two men to finally get him. <laughs> and the fourth guy finally gets him. Bruno's come in now replacing Cephas. Now they got Bruno and Cephas both in there. Townsell's the only wide man. They go into JoJo Townsell. He's there, but he's out of bounds. Oh, what a catch. Tremendous catch by Townsell. What are you talking about? Concentration on the football. <laughs> Was that it? We're seeing great receivers. Another thing, let me mention, now we're, we got 11.50 to go in the fourth quarter. Anthony Carter, they've only thrown to him one time in the second half, and it was picked off. He has not caught a ball. And now we see Townsell, that catch he made, over his shoulder, turning his body in the air. I mean, he was way out of bounds. But the concentration, you're absolutely right, Jim. All right, John Lee now will try for a field goal that could be crucial points for UCLA. They're leading by just one point. Snap the ball, the kick is away, and it is good. So UCLA has now upped its lead to four with 11.46 remaining in the game from Ann Arbor. 105,000 plus looking on. Now UCLA 31, Michigan 27. Not over yet. Some insurance points for UCLA. will now take a touchdown for Michigan to regain the lead. 10 plays, 62 yards, inning in the field goal to make it 31-27. And it's the most points the Michigan team has given up since Bo Schembechler's first year here in 1969. Missouri 40, Michigan 17. A long time. This game, you know, 11:46. UCLA touches that ball again. That's all they do is move down the field. 
Ken Potter's in the kickoff. He has been kicking about. There is a, a look at Lee who kicked the field goal. He's from Korea. Uh, Ken Potter will kick off for UCLA. He's been putting everything out of the end zone. And this one's going to go by the same place. Yep. Jimmy, you notice when he kicks, he punches it. He doesn't have that leg follow through that most field goal kickers or, or kickoff men do. He just runs up and just snaps it. Well, he snapped it right in the end zone for an automatic touchback. And Michigan now will come out to the 20. The fans here are beginning to start a roar. They want something to happen for the maize and blue. Michigan has scored only three points since halftime, and UCLA has rested the lead from them. Anthony Carter is in there. Carter was the big play man in the first half for Michigan. Terry Donahue feeling a little bit better about things now, but this one's far from over. Steve Smith on the deep handoff to Ricks. Up the middle he goes. Just straight power football upended by Carl Morgan. A gain of two or three yards. This is a situation that, that UCLA has not been in in this football game. This is the time when you see Eatman, Morgan, and Barbie, the defensive linemen, where they can just tee off and go. They really don't worry too much, especially now you got second down and seven yards to go. Thinking pass, Eatman, well, eat your lunch. Well, there may not be a better nose guard in America either than Carl Morgan. Not many of these. Second down and eight for UCLA. Another deep handoff to Ricks. He breaks through, and he comes over the 25, and he may have a first down. He's going to be very, very close. Boy, what a great effort by Ricks. I think he's short by a foot or so. Ron Butler finally gets the stop. Michigan has so much confidence in their straight-ahead power, don't they? They certainly do, and just take a look at it. Now you see the defensive line, what I was talking about. They're, they're, they're looking for pass. And they ran a little draw play, a little delayed draw play to Ricks, and he picks up six and a half of that seven. That's 95 yards, 94 yards today for uh, Lawrence Ricks on 26 carries. So he's right on the verge of a 100-yard game. Third and inches here for UCLA. It's Ricks, first down. He knifes that ball in between left guard and tackle to the 31. Ron Butler stops him with Don Rogers, but not before the first down for Michigan. 10 minutes, 25 seconds to go. A lot of time yet for Michigan. They need a touchdown to get back on the front. They threw the ball so well in the first half, Jim. Michigan, I'm talking about. Smith was on target. Anthony Carter caught five. Has not caught anything. Only thrown one to him, and that was intercepted. They see football. Ricks. Straight football. Just, just a handoff to get the first down. But they've got to go back to the pass, and that's what they're doing now. There's the fake. And now it is almost intercepted. He wanted to go to Vince Bean. And boy, that was so close to being picked off by Doug West. Vince Bean was wide open. Yep, he sure was. And there's the man who almost got it for UCLA, Doug West. Oh, it's self-reproach. He keeps slapping his hand. Watch it. Six foot three. Now, Smith, he could run with the ball. And <laughs> you talk about 6'3", playing like 6'12". <laughs> Got up in the air, knocked the ball down. He plays a lot on their pass defense. He's considered almost a starter by the coaching staff at UCLA. Fake handoff, Smith looking. Smith going to the sidelines. This time he's got his man done away, the tight end. But it's short of a first down. Lupe Sanchez was over to the cover as Dunaway went down as he had to leap to grab the ball. He played a split in last year, well, of course, when he had Norm Betts. Betts, who had a year of eligibility left, decided to go to dental school. Well, he was waiting for Anthony Carter to break clean, and he didn't do that, so he goes right back to his secondary receiver, who was the tight end. Uh, Sanchez didn't get in on time. Dunaway catches the ball and falls down. Here's an important play coming up for Michigan. Third down and plus five from the 36-yard line. About five and a half, if you want to get uh, picky about it. Smith will try. He goes to Anthony Carter. He's got it at the 50 and spun down right there, but it's first down for the Wolverines. Tom Sullivan, the strong safety, and this guy never drops one. I guess you can use the word never with, with Anthony Carter. That's his first reception in the second half. Six now for the game. They've got one-on-one. -on -one. Sullivan is trying to stay with him. Sanchez, number 21, does not come up as the free safety. Take a look at Sanchez is working on. There's Sullivan there. And Anthony Carter makes that great leaping catch. First down, 90 yards, one touchdown. Six, uh, just six catches, nine minutes to go in the game. 
Michigan trails by four. Now the first down. Now the deep handoff to the tailback as they continue to pound out with this ground game. And Rick Rogers is stacked up by Lee Knowles and Don Rogers almost the line of scrimmage. And they're starting to boo here. I mean, you get 105,431. That's 13, a lot of boos. Well, I think 13 of them may be from Los Angeles. <laughs> so give them uh, 105,400. Okay. That's uh, still a lusty roar, though, isn't it? Second, restless. second and ten. Carter is to the short side of the field on the right, and Vince Bean has the room out on the left. They got Carter away from Loper. They go to Carter, but the passer is hit. What a dead play by Carl Morgan. Morgan got in on Smith, and he busted him right uh, instant before the pass was released. Or maybe Carter would have had another one. That's the guy you were talking about, Mr. Morgan. Great He's player. A good football player. Yes, he is. And, and But I can't believe that UCLA is, is letting Anthony Carter run that short, quick pattern, that short post pattern about eight yards, and he's open. You've got to double this guy and let everybody else take the other people one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes, though, you take that throw in a way that he gets 50 on you. Yeah, that's true. He might break that thing across the middle and then shoot straight up the field on a streak pattern. Here he Third goes. Third and 10, blitz against it. And there he goes, and it's intercepted by UCLA. And coming back, looks like it might be Dunaway was intended receiver. Durden. Durden gets the pickoff. Mike Durden. Flag is down on the play, and let's see if uh, that's going to affect the interception. I don't think it is. They're talking with one of the Michigan captains. They're talking with Dunaway. It's a clip after the after the interception. But the ball will go over to UCLA. There's the signal by Jerry Hendrickson. Now watch it again. See if we can pick it up. All right. This pass play was covered all the way. There's Mr. Durden, number 29, taking the interception. Now we'll see if we can see the clip. There's the clip right there by number seven, Don Rogers. Well, you know, UCLA takes great pride in its nickel and dime defenses, and that time they were in a dime defense. They had six defensive backs in there. Boy, that's throwing into a crowd. They could double both sides. I'm going to put you on the spot, Mr. All right. Stacker. All right. Six um, defensive backs. How's that a dime? Well, a nickel Four defense is one extra somewhere. back. <laughs> a, a nickel defense is one extra back. <laughs> And a dime is two. That's simple, isn't it? Okay, I'll take that. First and ten, UCLA. Fullback has got it. Here comes Bruno fighting through for daylight over the 30. Frank Bruno finally stopped by Robert Thompson. What a game he's played. Keith Bostic was there, too. we got to start thinking about the player of the game, Paul. Uh, you can't pick 12, can you? No, I'll tell you right now, if, if I'm leaning towards Ramsey. Well, he's had a great game. And so has JoJo Townsell. And so has Thompson defensively, number 99 for Michigan. They had 10 more of those guys. Cephas and Wiley now have come in with a set of fresh backs here for Ramsey. A handoff is to Cephas, sweeping left side of a first down. He's got it. Spilled by Mike Bourne, but he crossed the 35-yard line. It'll be first and 10 UCLA. And now the Bruins are trying to eat up some clock. They're keeping the ball on the ground more with a four-point lead. 7.36 to go. You know, the... The thing that, that, that Michigan has to do is the first down play is the most important down. All right, now you see Sebas, he picks up the first down. A nice sweep to the outside. But these, these first down plays are so crucial to him because you've got to force UCLA to pass, but they've been killing you on the pass, so I don't know where you go. Well, there's Rams with a lot of time. Now he's going to run and pick up yardage. 40 to the 42, 43-yard line. About a five-yard gain by Tom Ramsey. John Lott making the stop. Boy, Rams is such a threat to run. That's going to add a little bit to his passing, when you think? Yeah, he, he likes to, to move in that pocket. He's not, uh, he is a good drop back quarterback, but watch him. He has got quick feet. He looks, he sees the coverage right now. It's supposed to be a quick pass, and now he's going to break to the outside. Watch Tapoli. Tapoli on the outside is, is trying to get a block for him. There's just too many people, but he takes one guy out, and that helps. Well, he got Thompson, and he, he couldn't take gear gas uh, both, so... It is second down and five. They hand it inside to Wiley. Slams toward the left side, and uh, Michigan throws him back. Geargash and Bourne, those two terrific inside linebackers. Geargash was the ABC player of the game last year, a week against Notre Dame. Terry Donahue, sister to Pepper Rogers, then later to Dick Vermeil, played for Tommy Prothro's great UCLA team in 66 that won the Rose Bowl. Now Bruno returns. Bruno and Cephas for the setbacks. It is third and about two yards to go for UCLA. And is this a big play for Michigan's defense? Ramsey to the air. 
being chased. Ramsey, he's going to get the first down. He steps out of bounds around the 50-yard line, and that'll keep UCLA alive. Al Sunchitz and Robert Thompson again in pursuit. Boy, Robert Thompson, you can't say enough about this young man. Ramsey shaking his head saying, can anybody block this guy? But watch the quick feet, the great athlete that Ramsey is. There's Thompson getting blocked, shit, gets to the outside, almost. But watch Ramsey, what he does. Goes down, sees that little yellow orange marker, sees he's got the first down, gets out of bounds, don't take any punishment. That's 21 first downs in this game for UCLA, 14 for Michigan. Four point lead is all, 31-27, almost six minutes left in the game. Safali is back in there with Cephas. They give it to Cephas straight ahead. Cephas stacked up around the 48. Leading the charge, Mike Bourne from his inline side linebacking post. Also in the play was Rose. Carlton Rose, number 89. I think what Ramsey's doing, he's coming up to the line of scrimmage and taking a look where Thompson is. Said, well, we don't want to go that way. Let's go, let's go up the middle or go the other way. Well, Thompson's played one wheel of a game. He had a, he based a lot of big plays from the weak side. Uh, last week, even though Michigan was uh, soundly beaten. Carney's back in flank to the right. Some of the fans beginning to leave, but this one's far from over. I got a hunt. Ramsey being chased. Caught. And who is it? Who else? Robert Thompson, number 99. Oh, my. Has he played some stout defensive performance here today? Well, there may be your cold by tellus players of the game. No, you Thompson. can't have that. <laughs> Why not? I wish we could. Third sack for Thompson. A young man, a senior from Blue Island, Illinois. Bruno returns for UCLA. Bach is running with four minutes, 46 seconds to go. Cormac is in there. Cephas remains in. And Bruno now is the only setback behind Ramsey. Ramsey fires, and it is incomplete. Way short of Paul Bergman. Incomplete. Also down there was uh, Townsell. So it's fourth down, and Michigan will get back to football with four and a half minutes remaining. And I think we're going to see a dramatic attempt here by Michigan to pull this one out. And if they're going to do that, they're going to have to go to you know who, number one, who is number one in the nation? Anthony Carter. Anthony Carter. He just set a new NCAA record for average gain per pass uh, reception for players over 4,000 yards for total offense. Set that last week. Here's the kick downfield. Waiting is Devin Cooper at the 20. Cooper needs a block. Running along the 30-yard line, and he's going to be dropped about there. Maybe the 29 by Sapali. So Michigan gets the ball. Four minutes, 22 seconds on the clock. UCLA 31, Michigan 27. Uh, this could be the Wolverines' last chance, so we'll see when we come back what the Wolverines can do. Well, football fans, circle the weekend of October 2nd. These two big games on ESPN. West Virginia at Pittsburgh. Jeff Hofstetler, transfer from Penn State, has really put life into West Virginia. They lost out of their luck, but they got Hofstetler. They've already upset Oklahoma. Now they take on the nation's number one ranked team, Pittsburgh, and you'll see it here on ESPN. A number two game that weekend, Notre Dame at Michigan State. And we don't have to tell you about the Irish. If you're a Michigan fan, you already know. They got a tough defense, and... Uh, they got plenty of running backs. So mark the down. October 2nd weekend, ESPN. West Virginia versus Pitt Sunday at uh, midnight. And Notre Dame versus Michigan State Monday at 8 p.m. Jim, you saw Michigan, uh, West Virginia. They, they're for real, aren't they? Well, they're a surprising team. They were completely outmanned, I thought, by Oklahoma. But they're a very well-coached uh, team up there by Naylor. And they've got a fine quarterback. Here's a little flip off on the side. Grabbed over there by the tailback Rodgers. And he's out of bounds after a uh, short game. Don Nealon has done a super job coaching West Virginia, I think. He's from Bowling Green. And getting Hostetler was just a great bonus after the graduation of Luck. Their season last year gave momentum. Yes, I think they're for real. They could get Pittsburgh a game. You know what we haven't seen in this football game? Not one. One screen. We have not seen a screen, not a screen pass in this game. Not many draws. And yet there's been a great deal of passing. Rick Rogers remains a tailback. So Ricks is not in there. Eddie Gares the fullback. Here's Smith being charged. Downfield for Carter. Double team. And Smith may have seen it. He threw it out of bounds. He was being covered. Morgan really put the heat on uh, that time, too, along with West. 
And Sanchez and Sullivan had double coverage set up that time on Anthony Carter. Yeah, they did, and, and Smith was throwing the ball to Anthony Carter all the way. There was some heat in the backfield. Uh, West was there, the big guy coming at him. But uh, if indeed he threw the ball away, it was a smart play. You take a look at the timeouts, Michigan only has two. And here's a big third and long, too, uh, Paul. They got third down and uh, a long seven, maybe almost eight to go for first down. If they don't make it, they're going to give up the football. Quarterback draw by Smith. Over the 40 for the first down. Brilliant call by Steve Smith. A quarterback draw, and he's out to the 44-yard line. That's the first time we've seen that play, which is sort of a favorite of his. It is a great call because they read the defensive line. Now, you take a look at the rush on the defensive line. They open up everybody to the outside. The linebackers they know are, are running off at least five or six yards. And he just went right up the middle and picked up six carries, 45 yards. Well, that was a big third down call by Smith. Sanchez and Barbie made the stop for UCLA. But it's a first down to 44 and still ample time. Four minutes, six seconds to go. Remember, field goal does not do it for Michigan. They must score the touchdown. Trailing by four. Sullivan just went off, but he only he has leg cramps. He's Car all right, he'll be back. Carter's there, he's the bottom of your screen, number one. And Vince B, the top of your screen. Here's the option by Smith on the keep. Smith breaking it over the 45 to the 40 and to the 37. Steve Smith now taking command for Michigan. Two big plays in a row for the Wolverines, and they're on the march. And remember now, field goal doesn't do them any good. They're behind by four. Smith goes down the line of scrimmage. This is a problem that UCLA had in the first quarter. Aidman gets blocked to the inside, and then a couple of missed tackles. And then finally, Rodgers brings it down. Good play. Paul, I saw Smith's performance last year at Minneapolis against Minnesota. And it was uh, very similar to plays like that. They had a great game. Three minutes, 20 seconds to go. Michigan trailing by four points on the march. Play action fake. Over the middle to Carter. Broken up. This Intercepted. Time. Intercepted. Here comes Durden, I believe it is. Over the 45 to 50. Down to the 40. It is Dolacono. Neil Delocano on a tip ball, pulls down the interception. Don Rogers batted away from Carter. And talk about big plays. That could be the one that sealed the verdict for UCLA. Jimmy, take a look at the number of guys that are on Anthony Carter. Look at here. There are five guys in the area. He got his clock clean. It was almost impossible for him to catch the ball. Delacano, <laughs> what's he trying? He's a back. He's in a little hesitation move. And then the quarterback, Smith, kind of nudges him out of bounds. As a sophomore from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, he was the defensive rookie of the year for UCLA last year, and he just came up with what may be the big play of the game. Bruno, the fullback. Tailback is Safali or Nelson. There's the give to Nelson, looking for a hole. Stopped by Hassel inside the 35. Well, we're inside three minutes, my friend, and UCLA now, what they need to do, other than score, let's look at it realistically, just keep the ball on the ground, eat up as much of the clock as you possibly can. Well, ideally, they just assume not score, but not give up the ball. They run out, four-point lead. They were favored by, like, two points coming into this game. Safali in motion. Pitches back to Cephas on the sweep. Cutting back. Keeps the ball on the ground. Clock rolling down to the 30. About two yards short, shy of a first down. And number 99 will be at the bottom of the sack when they come out again. Robert Thompson. <laughs> well, UCLA ran after him. Cephas this time, if he stays to the outside, he could still be running. Because the blocking was there. They had everything sealed to the inside. But look at Thompson. He gets off the block and makes the tackle. I, you know, we, we keep talking about him because he makes the tackles in the game. He's got to have more than the entire football team. Now less than two minutes to go. Third down and three for UCLA. It's a must defensive play here for Michigan. They've got to stop UCLA. They give it uh, up the middle to Cephas. Fumbles the ball. That's the first fumble we've had today, and the penalty flag is down. No, they blew the ball dead after he hit the ground and he and I believe he's got the first down and, and that'll do it as he did first down and now UCLA with one minute 41 seconds to go probably can run out the clock Michigan can stop it twice but that's all all right you're going to see this they, they take it right up the middle here Cephas goes up 
Now, yeah, I believe he fumbled. He fumbled the football. He was not down, and the man that hit him was born. Well, he may have gotten it back. So maybe Michigan couldn't have gotten a turnover even without the call. Now a minute 25 remaining. First down play, you know UCLA's going to keep it on the ground. Here comes Nelson, the wide sweep. Nelson going as far wide as he can, stopped on the 29, loss of a yard, Keith Bostic. Michigan's got to take timeouts now. That stops the clock with a minute 13 to go. Are UCLA not nearly as concerned now with moving the football as they are moving the clock? Well, that's the story. Just a little over a minute to go, and UCLA, once trailed by 21 in this game, now leads it by four. We'll be back for the finish after this. Michigan will have one timeout remaining. UCLA second down 11. And a four point lead at the Michigan 29. Hand off to see, fumble on the ball. Watch him scramble for it. Michigan is gonna get it at the midfield strike. A bizarre play has given Michigan one last chance. Body gets the ball, number three. Marion Body, a senior from Detroit, number three. Came up with a football. One minute, five seconds to go. Hold on to your hats, everyone. It's not over yet. Oh, costly mistake. Cephas is the guy. You've got to go with the football. You see Ramsey and Cephas, everybody's scrambling for the ball. Body is the man, number three, that comes up with it. <laughs> you were ready to go home, weren't you? Well, it looked like <laughs> UCLA was in the perfect shape, but Michigan never gives up. The last time Michigan lost two games in a row was 1980. But they've only done it twice here in the 10 years under Bo Schembechler. Now Smith is in. Anthony Carter to the right side. They're going to double him for sure. There he goes to Carter. Bad pass, incomplete. Thrown in the ground, and Carter was there open. Carter is always open, except for that one that he threw into a crowd of five guys. One minute, one second remaining. Michigan second and 10 on their 48. They're trailing by four. They need the touchdown. Now, Bean said something to Bo Schembechler. Then she Bo Schembechler called Smith in. Whether they're going to go to Bean or not, Bean is one on one with Durden. All right, here we go. Play action fake. They're going to Carter. Carter's got it at the 37. Hit down immediately. 55 seconds to go. That young man sure draws the crowd, doesn't he? Well, you talk about drama. Lupe Sanchez, a great cornerback for UCLA, who has uh, three interceptions, was all over him. Michigan now going without a huddle. 50 seconds to go in the game. Sidelines to stop the clock. Over the head of Bean. 47 seconds to go. Well, Michigan has still got to make up 37 yards on UCLA and. There's the man they'll have to depend on, Steve Smith. Been the big play guy here today with his passing and with some key runs. Well, he got one thing going against him, and the only thing is that they've only got one timeout, and they had to waste a play, a first down play, in order to get the ball, to get the clock stopped. Remember, it stops on a first down, but, but then it starts again. Second down. Smith now throwing on every down. Plenty of time. Smith, now he's going to run, try to get out of bounds. And he does around the 33. But that play ate up some more time, almost 10 seconds. Doug West broke through. It's 39 seconds now left on the clock. And it'll be third down coming up for Michigan. Two more tries in this series. Smith now is 157 yards through the air. Jimmy, I know he wants to get the ball to number one, Anthony Carter. We've talked about him, and he is a great receiver. But you've got to look someplace else. 39 seconds remaining. Carter is way to the right. The sun has come out here today brightly for the first time. Here's Smith looking for Carter. Now he comes back to Bean and is broken up at the 20-yard line. Going to Vince Bean. Great defensive play Jimmy by Jimmy Turner. Turner. Or oh. did he ever? And he comes out the worst of it, it looks like. That was some collision. Well, Jimmy Turner, when you take a look at the play, Jimmy Turner, what he does is he is going for the man. And they both got there at the same time. Had he hit him before, that would have passed interference. Look at that. He's going at the man, and he got his hands in for the ball. Bain is the guy that he went to. I said you got to look at somebody else besides Anthony Carter because they're not only double-teaming him, but they're playing him short with a linebacker. 
They call Turner Mr. Dependable on the UCLA team. He's got 10 lifetime interceptions for the Bruins from Sherman, Texas. But uh, he was shaken up there, so we've got time out. We're going to have to tell you about our most valuable player here shortly. It's been an outstanding game. There have been so many outstanding players. But I think the guy you got to look for under these circumstances before a hostile crowd and 21 points down the way he brought his team back. That the vote will go to Tom Ramsey. I second that. The young man brought his team back from a 21 point deficit to a four point advantage right now at 31 27. He had the help of his receivers no question about that but he put the ball on target. So our Vitalis most valuable player game award goes to Tom Ramsey the senior quarterback of UCLA from Granada Hills California had over 300 yards passing today and uh, they're going to help this man off. Dr. Fenneman is out there for UCLA and Jimmy Turner's going to be helped off the field. So Mike Durden has come up with some big plays of his own is in. It's fourth down for Michigan. Four they need to pick up five yards to get a first down. They have 34 seconds only left in the game and Michigan trails by four. Paul you can't get any more exciting play than this one. <laughs> can you? Oh I, I love mean, this, this game. Is and uh, there are there are some people that left not a whole lot though. Now, a whole lot could leave here. There'd be a bunch left, wouldn't there? <laughs> oh, yeah. 105,000 plus. Everybody holding his breath here. Michigan's got to get five yards on this player. It's all over. He's gonna and it's it. a quarterback draw, and here comes Smith, and he has got it at the 25-yard line. First down for Michigan with 27 seconds left. Walter Lang on the stop. And for the third time when they had to have it, Steve Smith comes through from Michigan. They're lining up on a line of scrimmage because they have to go. Remember this? No, nope, Michigan's going to take their final timeout. That's it. No more times out left for Michigan, but there's only 27 seconds look to go. Look at Bo. Bo's going bananas. Yeah, look at Bo. Now, they're charging Michigan with a timeout. That's what he's protesting about. Come now, on, Bo, settle down. They now. should give him a penalty for being on the field because he's not supposed to be on the field. I don't care if they're at home or not. Uh, a bow is asking for one right here. Get a penalty. Throw the flag. Now the some of the players come over, try to restrain their coach. Well, it's no secret that uh, Bo is not your uh, <laughs> fading violent, is he? No, he's not. But I'll tell you right now, the officials, you can't let something like that. I don't care how heated this ball game is. When a man is out throwing his hat at your feet, uh, Paul, he gained something here. He shows his team how much he's behind them, and he really gains by being out on the field. I agree with you. I think there should have been a flag there. Oh, yeah, he does. Get, you know, he gets them fired, but he should have had them fired up and, you know, before that. Uh, I thought they were when they came out with a 21-point lead. Well, now, I've known Bo for many, many years back in his Mid-American Conference days at Miami uh, when he had great teams there. Never had a losing season in 19 years of coaching. That's an amazing record. All right, what this does now, it limits Michigan. It's tough for them to throw the ball over the middle. They've got to get any sideline stuff and the short stuff, uh, or they've got to go deep into the end zone. There's Smith, and he's going to Carter, and it is broken up. Ooh, Carter almost got that. Walter Lang. They're gambling that Carter could get free, and Smith just put it to the spot in the corner at the flag. Well, that's what I'm saying. They've got to go deep with the ball now because if they, if they, they can't stop the clock anymore, they have no more timeouts. And watch where Lang ends up. Lang is going to be down on the end zone. And then he comes up to the ball. You see that? He's just playing center field. And he almost blew it by tipping the ball in the air. Absolutely. But they've, they know that they've got to throw the ball deep. That's Jimmy Turner. He was taken out at the cornerback. Ridden replaced by Mike Dirt. Now there's less than 20 seconds to go here. Smith and it's broken up. Smith trying to hit downfield to Eddie Garrett, his fullback, and Carl Morgan was really putting the pressure on Smith. There is the play where UCLA would have been better off if the man would have caught the ball because it wouldn't have been the first down and the clock might have run out. There's only 16 seconds left to go. It's third and 10. Time for two more, uh, conceivably three, because UCLA is going to have to pick up 10 yards in the next couple of plays. Or give up the ball. It's third and ten. We got a dump in the end zone, and they've got two safeties sitting in in, in the end zone now. So they're going for Anthony Carter. There he is, and it is caught out of bounds at the ten. I don't believe this guy, Anthony Carter. Everybody knew they were going to him, 
He makes the catch anyway. And Smith laid the ball out. This man has got great hands. We've talked about him. You know they're going to throw the ball to him. But look where Smith puts the ball. Over the corner, Sanchez. Into the hands of Anthony Carter. That Sullivan was there, but a little bit too late. They've got the ball inside the nine, inside the eight. First and goal. Now Smith can go to the end zone, and Carter is out here on the left. There it goes to the right side, incomplete. Stops the clock. Now, why would he do that? The clock stopped anyway. Trying to get a, a, a defensive pass interference penalty. Eight seconds to go. Boy, Michigan has come so far here after recovering the fumble. Well, now they're down to where any play could be the last one. Bo sends on the message. Doug James will bring it in. And that'll be up to Smith and Carter or Bean to perform. Here is an ideal situation, except for one problem. They have no timeouts to run that quarterback draw because the defensive linemen are going to open up that middle, and they're going to come. Bean's to the left side, rolling out toward Bean. Man. And here is Smith going to the end zone, and it is incomplete. Way long, it's over Bean's head. Now are two seconds to go. That was Eatman, the All-American for UCLA, giving chase to Steve Smith. There's the score, 31-27 UCLA. And Michigan making a gallant attempt here in the last gasp to pull this one out. This will be the last chance barring a penalty. It is third and goal at the UCLA 9. And now it is all up to Mr. Smith and his bevy of receivers. Anthony Carter comes out the left side, you know, they got to keep an eye on him. Here it is Smith. He's throwing to Anthony Carter, and it is incomplete. That's incomplete. The game. the game is over. UCLA has won it, but it wasn't decided until it was the final tick of the clock. And look at the happy Bruins. They trail by 21 points in this game. They came back to win it on the throwing arm of Tom Ramsey and almost pulled out of the fire by Michigan. So that's it. As thrilling a game as college football can give you. And we had it here in this one at Ann Arbor before 105,000. The final, UCLA 31 and Michigan 27. An amazing comeback today. UCLA trailing by 21 points the first half. Roared back on the passing of Ramsey to win it. The first time ever for UCLA to beat Michigan. And it, it was beautiful. Ramsey did the things that he had to do. He was a little shaky in the first quarter, and Michigan took advantage of some mistakes. But then he got his poise back. He knew he had Townsell, the receiver. He knew he had Williams. He, he had uh, Carney. He just did what he had to do, picked them apart, and won the football game for me. You can't say enough about the defense, and especially a young man from Michigan, Thompson. Thompson. Oh, what yeah. a game he played, and what a game Smith played, what a game Anthony Carter played. There were all American performances on both sides here today, as great a game as you'll ever want to see. So from the gloom of Ann Arbor, this is Jim Thacker for Paul McGuire saying goodbye, and what a game we had for you in this one. The final coming from behind, UCLA 31 and Michigan 27.